for your suit it's not looking for your tie all that is nonsense what will he do with your suit and your tie he's not even looking for your destiny he knows that anything minus the word is equal to nothing for nothing was made that was not made by him are we together now the bible says in the beginning listen carefully it didn't say in the beginning was a formula in the beginning was the word and that word was with God and that word was God he said he was with God in the beginning then he says through him all things were made and he says nothing including a destiny nothing was made that was not by him so Satan knows that the making factor in men's lives is the word so when he comes to this gentleman he doesn't have any business with your tie or whatever he looks for where the word is and the bible says satan cometh immediately if satan steals the word from you you will pass him and he will pass you he has no business with you again it is the one thing that he will seek and fight for show me a man my brothers and my sisters listen very carefully no matter what satan has done in your life if the word of God can come upon you, if the word of God can be understood and received and diligently applied with faith, you will make nonsense out of the devil. It's only a matter of time. Is someone getting what I'm saying? Because you see, we have to be careful. Church people right now don't grow again because we are used to the religious activity of the world we come and sit down and our bibles we are writing notes that can change our lives but there is a demon of religion sitting on people many people have written their miracles in their jota and yet they remain in bondage many have written the formula for their lifting and yet it looks like heavens are closed many have written the formula for their prosperity many have written the formula that will wipe the tears of their family the bible says ever learning but never coming to the knowledge of the truth so don't get used to religion oh it's time for the word oh yeah let's judge acts chapter this we write if it's a nice word you say mm preach preacher and all those kinds of things we share the grace and people go back and nothing changes let me tell you religion is a demon it's not just a wrong philosophy i believe there is a spirit of religion that makes people hang around god but never benefit from him are we together now yes you can get so used to do i invited sister a i invited brother b and you sit down and don't get blessed yourself or i am a worker you can be standing behind the mic singing when i raise a song and the revelation that can transform your destiny comes and you sing it out of your life while you are not listening and focusing so we have to be sensitive my brothers and my sisters god is not a magician there is an exact way men are raised in this kingdom. Can you cry in one minute again and say, I cause distraction from my life. Lord, whatever it is that makes that I do not understand. You can imagine how brilliant people are, but the moment the word comes, they become unfruitful to it. That means it's an attack. I don't believe anybody here is dull. Some of us, academically speaking, we are very sound people. But the moment it comes to the issue of the word, there is an attack. Please pray. Please pray. Please pray. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. This kingdom life that we are living is a supernatural life. And it's a life that will continue to call for contention. That is the reason why you can finish an encyclopedia but not be able to read 100 pages from your Bible. What is so difficult about this thing that you cannot read is because there is a spirit behind it. I can give you a novel that is twice this page and some of you will finish it in one week and you don't have time. It's not that you sit down and you will keep reading. And within one week you are done but you pick this to read and see what happens you will it will be a miracle if you cross 10 pages of this doesn't matter what part 
that means there is a spirit that opens this for you it's amazing how you can sit down and open your bible and open side by side with even a christian book and you would rather read the christian book nothing is wrong with it you are reading it but just to sit and read this one raw every demon from hell will fight you because this word you see let me tell you whether you understand what he's saying or not the moment your eyes make contact with this word something starts happening to your spirit and that's the reason why when the word of god is about being taught somebody who already slept in the afternoon the spirit of slumber just comes on the person you see that as soon as the service is over he can stand behind a car and discuss politics for two hours so it was never about tiredness it was about an attack on the word you heard the testimony of the dear lady here she came and sat down as soon as praise and worship was over the fire from the praise and worship made those spirits you see evil spirits are real please let's 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 not fool ourselves let us know this world we live in we are not alone are we together that you sit down from the start to the finish of a service is a miracle it's a sign that god is doing something in your life you see people you see what happens during miracle service the moment prayers are about to offer you want to ease yourself you want to do something ah, i feel uncomfortable it's a lie it's an agitation these spirits are seeing beyond dimensions that your eyes can see so they know what is happening in the realm of the spirit as the power of god is about to be released and they will cause every discomfort some of you who drag people here to come and repent notice how well behaved they are as soon as the praise and worship starts they just say I, I, i'm tired i want to go it's a lie they are not tired the spirit that needs to be casted out you see that let me tell you my brothers and my sisters if someone invites you here and you ever get to this ground or connect it's a sign that your miracle has started because the kind of attack you try it one day and you will see that somebody who would ordinarily give you money will say sorry i don't have any money for anything just to leave kaduna and come it's an attack are we together now but you have a responsibility to refuse the will of man is respected even by demons yes sir if god respects your will then every other force on earth must respect your will if they usurp your will they manipulated you in a way that allowed them to find expression i set before you life and death i set before you blessing and cursing i can't force you i can only advise you choose life you don't choose life just by verbalizing it you choose life by paying the price to sit down and do the things that minister life are we together mm -hmm. help us tonight holy spirit in the name of jesus some of you here need to go on a project just gather strategic koinonia messages that relate to certain areas in your life the media will be more than glad to help you are we together you put these teachings together and you go on a word fast let me tell you what that means you will eat there are many kinds of fasting most people only know the one that you suspend eating for 12 hours or some days but there is a way you can go on a movie fast that means you off every movie you can go on a phone fast off your phone it's, it's a way of fasting are we together and then you can have time for the word that the only thing your ear hears for a whole day is a message not somebody calling you ah how are you mm -mm. the only thing that you hear aside from bikes driving themselves out is the word of god you sit down and say lord my life must change what is the key you hear one message you hear part of the key it can be a message you've always had but now because you are giving god your attention fire comes from heaven and that's it you catch something you will come out of that place knowing that i've gotten this when you say they will laugh at you until the results bail you out please give your destiny time you heard what the dear lady said
wonderful lady by the way i'm busy nobody is busy it's a lie we are looking for something nobody is busy if you're on your way going to kaduna this night and i say hold on somebody wants to give you one million are you busy talk to me no so the idea of being busy means i have not yet come to an understanding that the word of god is profitable so please let me leave it aside while i look for the things that look profitable nobody leaves what gives you profit so if you do not have time for the word it's a revelation it's a sign that in your dealings with god you have not been quickened to a point where you have seen the value and the profitability of the word of god so you can throw away the word of god and watch film i'm, I'm not please don't get me wrong i'm not against movies but i'm telling you there is a devil out there that is demeaning the power of the word of god and we choke all kinds of things in our heads and with it spirits come create fortifications and then this is what we say because we believe that just hanging around the word of god will produce result we will get angry and say i've done everything i know to do you see that i've done everything i prayed every prayer i attended this i even fasted god is unfair it's not true everybody that gives god time must get something from him if you give me time your life will never be the same give satan time your life will never be the same one of the reasons why we never see his outstretched arm is because we don't give god time i'm busy i'm too busy i'm, I'm busy it's demonic my soul wait thou upon the lord because my brothers and my sisters all that we are looking for one visitation from god can give you something that in a lifetime you may never get preacher say it but it is true I will search for you and I will find you and I will find you with all my heart I will lift my hands to you in worship and I will worship with all my heart we will search for you and we will find you we will find you with all our heart we will lift our hands to you in worship and we will worship with all our heart one more time let me just sing the song that i will search for you and i will find you i will find you with all my heart and i will lead my voice to you in worship I will worship with all my heart. I want you to sit quietly tonight and listen to what I want to teach you. Sit with your soul, your spirit, your ears and listen. God knows, ask him that I love you with all my heart. My philosophy of leadership is that you are a failed leader until the people you lead become exceptionally successful by every standard are we together now so it doesn't matter whether it's a revelation yet to me i must insist until it speaks in your life because you see the bible says wisdom is justified by her children by her children Genesis chapter 2. Genesis chapter 2. Blessed be the name of the Lord. For those of you worshiping for the first time, God bless you. We we'll honor you at the end of the service. For now, let's get to the word of God. Genesis chapter 2. Verse 15. 
Genesis 2 verse 15 Genesis 2 verse 15 what is this that I see I command that spirit to leave now I command the Lord just showed me something I command that spirit you just allow me to do my madness I command that spirit you must let this family go now I command that spirit you must let this family go now the Bible says now the Lord is that spirit he says and where the spirit of the Lord is the same I'm seeing two people to overflow one I command that spirit to go now you are leaving right now this chain that has held this family is time for them to testify I command that spirit to leave in the name of Jesus Christ I command that spirit to lead. There is still one more person. The Lord is not allowing me to continue. In the name of Jesus, I command that spirit to lead. You have to go. This is Mount Zion. You know, one of the things that happens, let me teach you something. Do you know when God opens your eyes in the spirit, you will be able to know when, let me tell you what happens. When God opens my eyes now in the spirit, I will not only see an individual sitting, I will also see the spirits connected to them. You see? Yes. And usually, because the eye is the light of the body, once there is that contact, there is an agitation in the realm of the spirit. And that's why sometimes someone can just be looking quietly and start shouting. The individual doesn't know what just transacted in the realm of the spirit. Remember the demons looked at Jesus and they saw the body of a 33 year old young man. But when they looked, they said, ah, no, are you not? And Jesus said, keep quiet. So you can see beyond just an individual sitting. That's what just happened now. You'll be surprised now these people will come and testify. And tell you for 10 years nobody has risen in our family and that's it Genesis chapter 2 and verse 15 please follow me carefully let's see how God will grant us grace to make progress and the Lord God took the man and put him into the garden of Eden to dress and to keep it 16 and the Lord God commanded the man saying, listen, of every tree of the garden thou mayest freely eat. 17. But of the tree of the knowledge, the tree of the knowledge, not a knowledge, the tree of the knowledge of good and evil shall thou not eat. For in the day that you eatest thereof, you will die. Now, listen carefully. Jesus is giving a disclaimer here. He's giving man access to the garden. Are we together now? And he's giving man a disclaimer that in this garden, there are many trees. I give you access to partake. The word eat there doesn't just mean eat alone. It means to partake of the benefits that come with that privilege. He says that... There is a kind of tree that he forbids. It's amazing that even the tree that is forbidden has good. Now listen carefully. The tree has what? Yet is part of the forbidden tree. So he says this tree doesn't have evil alone. There are many good things that can come from this tree. Yet there is a reason why i forbid you from partaking and this is the reason that the day you eat that tree regardless of the good it carries that day you will die look up the day man ate of this did he die in as much as we know death adam did not die eve did not die that means he was talking about something else in the day not in the month remember until this time he had created time and seasons 
so he says in the day the moment you partake this death starts for you listen carefully and then in spite of the fact that it comes with good notice the marketing system of the three it projects good first then evil not evil and good the character of this tree is such that when you come you will never know there is evil on it the system is good and evil even god acknowledges that the tree had good are we together now genesis chapter 3 we'll read from verse 1 let's see to verse 7 very quickly and then we'll have a very serious discussion tonight and pray the lord is giving us wisdom verse 1 now the serpent was more subtle than any beast of the field which the lord god had made and he said unto the woman listen satan is talking now yea had god said ye shall not eat of every tree of the garden verse 2 and the woman said unto the serpent we may eat of the fruit of the trees of the garden verse 3 but the fruit of the tree which is in the midst of the garden because the woman was not there when God was telling the man this tree has good and evil Adam just told her that this is a tree in the midst of the garden and so she's replying Satan now God had said ye shall not eat neither shall ye touch lest ye die for and the serpent said to the woman ye shall not surely die for God doth know so we are talking of knowledge here remember now the tree of the knowledge the tree of the knowledge there is knowledge in the tree the central thing there is knowledge not fruit knowledge the tree of the knowledge are we together now if you have the tree of the knowledge of banana that tree will not when you eat banana from that tree it teaches you something the tree is a lecturer the fruit in the tree can teach men certain things are you getting what i'm saying now and now he's saying that god knows that in the day remember all of this will happen in a day both the death and this that you eat thereof the first thing is that your eyes shall be opened that means a kind of illumination will come to you and then ye shall be as what as gods knowing good and evil wow that means one characteristic feature between gods is that they have a supply of knowledge and the power to use that knowledge to produce good to produce evil are we together now that whoever can manipulate knowledge and bring an outcome of good and manipulate knowledge and bring an outcome of evil is no longer a man he didn't say he's the god of heaven but he said this one is not man are you getting the discussion now knowing good and evil verse 6 and when the woman saw that the tree was what now notice she didn't see anything evil again the tree is walking now this is how the tree works what did the woman see good for food and it was pleasant to the eyes and the tree desired to make one wise what kind of wisdom we don't know but we know that there is wisdom in the tree she took of the fruit thereof and did eat and gave unto her husband with her and he did eat you see that Adam was there with her next verse and truly like Satan said the eyes of them both were what open so he didn't entirely lie he said this tree can open your eyes but he didn't say what that open eye will do and so their eyes were open and they knew that they were naked and they sowed fig leaves and all of that and all of that now when you read all the drama that happened 
when God came down say man what is happening he said this woman blah 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 just let's go to verse 11 I'll read just verse 11 and then I'll begin to teach and he said who told you that you were naked then he said hast thou because this knowledge you should not have gotten it there is no way as a man without an assistance your knowledge is limited although you are a man without sin this should not be given to you then he says have you eaten of the tree and he says i commanded you not to eat you read on and he said the woman you put the woman said the serpent and he was angry and began to curse them but something interesting happened he said man has become like one of us just follow me man has become like one of us i thought the bible says he created man image and after his likeness now god is saying something is wrong man has become like one of us and for that we will not allow him in this state to eat of the tree of life again because if he takes of the tree of life you know the tree of life was designed to keep you living in whatever state you are so now that this guy's the whole plan has been corrupted if we allow him to eat of the tree of life then redemption will no longer be possible so let's drive him out so that it can be possible to redeem this man are we together now please sit down right from genesis we see that there is a fight for knowledge the bible tells us that the first tree listen carefully the first tree was not called the tree of the knowledge of life it was called the tree of life but the second tree works by giving men information that it supplies you an information that gives your life good but with it eventually it destroys you are we together now Jesus there is a tree of the knowledge of good and evil that is interwoven in this system this cosmos that we live in please listen very carefully many people like Eve have not received the miracle of understanding to discern that the trees that they continue to partake of are poisonous trees that are ministering death to their destinies and death to their lives and so my exhortation really tonight is a wake-up call to open your eyes to something very deep about the destruction that is happening to many people that they do not know they continue to die daily not as Paul said by their continual connection with this tree and that you will never be able to do much for the kingdom until you understand this in the name of Jesus Christ I look at lives today as a man of God I look at people's destinies and I see certain results in their lives that I wonder how those kinds of results would have been produced are you getting what I'm saying now yes I know that these results are a product of a philosophy a product of an ideology that has been sold by a system that has been sold by a sociological context that does not honor God nor have regard for the ways of God are we together now remember the tree of life based the tree of the knowledge of good and evil the Bible tells us it is very tempting when the woman saw it there was an attraction are we together now many people's lives today have become a mess and has become complicated I am almost afraid when I look at our society today and look at the level of confusion the level of aimlessness that surrounds the lives of people people are almost clueless about everything in life the young and the old alike 
the rich and the poor alike and we do not know the source of this confusion I want to show you tonight if I can successfully show you and we pray my assignment tonight has been fulfilled are we together Colossians chapter 2 blessed be the name of the Lord we'll read verse 8 Colossians chapter 2 and verse 8 read with me please look up one to read beware lest any man spoil you through what philosophy uh-huh and vain deceit after the traditions of men here's my key point and after the methodology the modus operandi the system of this world the greek word here is aeon an age and a mindset that is brought with that age that do not let the word spoiled here is plunder take advantage of do not let any man take advantage of you through philosophy through vain deceit through the traditions of men after the methodology there is a system that this world operates listen carefully there is a way and manner that has been sold humanity as a race have been scammed by a system a system that has advocated a way of life and a template of living and the bible says that compared to god's standard that template is wrong now but it's very difficult because the character of that tree is that it has good and we live in a society where we are governed by results which is an advantage for satan because then he can project the good that comes with that system and with it he can buy the loyalty of people by the time you can prove to me that a method is working regardless of the side effects are we together now we have products right now that are 60 percent um 60 percent potent in their result and we believe that those products are enough and we sell them so we live in a world where once there is an evidence that something works we package it and we go mainstream and we market it to people but we do not know that that good the bible says that on that is a strategy that satan projects the good in every evil thing no evil thing comes as evil even satan comes as an angel of light are you getting me now so the character of evil is such that it projects the good first so that you are baited by that good like you dangle a worm attempting to catch a fish and the fish comes hoping to eat the worm not knowing that there is a hook behind are we together now and then that fish is caught up by the hook that don't let any man spoil you there is a philosophy in this world there is a philosophy in this age that when men subscribe to the bible says the side effect is that it is as though an armed bandit came to your house and plundered you the confusion that is in people's lives today on almost every subject matter is a call for concern that we must get back to understanding the disaster that is encapsulated in the tree of the knowledge of good and evil now society may not agree government may not agree because there are statistics to show that the tree has good are we together now so when you tell somebody come my dear when you tell someone um give your life to jesus and throw away some of the herbal things that were used in your village this lady will prove to you how that herbal medicine healed five people are you getting what i'm saying now everybody say good shout it again say good and the lady would tell you she's on five points now because they said any time is time for exam rob that thing before you go to the exam hall and my goodness did it work so now that lady will not listen to your proposition to say i should throw it is it just because it has a little side effect 
the benefits outweigh the side effects you will say the same way you say salt one pinch of salt cannot affect a whole you know bowl of soup you don't put the same size of vegetables as you do the salt yet sometimes just for putting a little more you can completely ruin that soup that's how evil is evil does not have to be the same size with good it just has to be present sufficient enough to create an effect are you getting me now you are not the only one who is salt evil too is salt are you getting what i'm saying you are not the only one who is salt evil too is salt that's why the bible says, a little living a little not much a little please follow me very carefully this lady now can serve god but she will hold on to her charms because if the charms were 100 percent failed she would throw it obviously the devil knows nobody ever walking with the devil has 100 percent evil no he doesn't walk that way he's smart enough to know ask an robber why he's still stealing he will tell you the last stealing my god we had 11 million and that 11 million changed our life i even gave tight it looks good ask him now to stop stealing the memory of the 11 million will make sure he goes back to steal are you getting what i'm saying now evil blatantly will usually drive you away but the good component in it is what will give you the same power to remain so the bible says do not eat of that tree of good and evil there are philosophies my brothers and my sisters listen carefully there are mindsets there are belief systems that we have adopted that come with this age the bible tells us they are traceable to a tree they are traceable to a root that markets good to men and at the end destroys them thank you my dear The Bible tells us again that this system that we live in has something called the wisdom of this age. The wisdom of this age. First Corinthians chapter 2. I'm just trying to gather my scriptures before I begin to build. You will be so blessed. First Corinthians chapter 2. Paul is teaching the church in Corinth and here's what he says. 1 Corinthians chapter 2 verse 6 How be it we speak wisdom among them that are perfect and so you are not confused Paul now begins to distinguish what that wisdom is that kind he says yet not the wisdom of that means this world has its own kind of wisdom wisdom by its character produces results it doesn't matter what kind of wisdom are we together now but the bible is saying there is wisdom that is not the wisdom of god it is the wisdom of this world there is even the wisdom that is the wisdom of the princes of this world but the Bible says all of them come to naught. What does that mean? That means the end of them is death, is destruction. The wisdom of this world, the wisdom of the princes of this world that we pride ourselves in, that we build the entire philosophy of our lives, the Bible says that wisdom, whoever walks with that dimension of knowledge, doom and destruction is inevitable. Look at me, please. Most of the issues in our world today are only symptoms of a bigger problem. Are we together? Most of the issues in our world today, the issues that we face that we, we believe are the issues that are depriving man and mankind from his dignity, most of them are only symptoms of a bigger issue. 
The same way someone can have headache and a doctor can say, no, this is not headache, it is malaria. The headache is a symptom of something. Meaning if you take Panadol, it may give you a temporary relief, but you are not going to be healed from that malaria until you are properly treated. We spend our time addressing symptoms. We write books about symptoms. Listen carefully. We hold conferences on symptoms and very few people are willing to go to the root and deal with the foundation that brings about this, this tragic problem of mankind. The ideas of this world have made our lives complicated. The life of the average person living in today's world is as complicated as a gadget. This wisdom we have adopted like a virus, they have created a web of complication. They have robbed us of the simplicity of life. Destroyed everything about us. Family life has been broken down to nonsense. The dignity of responsibility has been broken down to nonsense. Meritocracy, godliness, all of these virtues that build up society and advance men, they had been attacked for many years and now we are seeing the effect. We have enjoyed the good of that tree for a long time. And right now, people are beginning to see the evil. You are trying to run away, but the tree said, you received all of me. You received the advancement that I gave you. You received the technology that I gave you. Are we together now? You received all of the enlightenment that I gave you. Now the other side of the equation is opening up. And the war, the crime, the decadence, and people are saying, what kind of world are we in? Not knowing that is a fruit we ate. And now we are paying for everything. And let me tell you, my brothers and my sisters, that tree is continuing to dangle every day. If we keep eating of that tree, it will not only kill us, it will kill our children and our children's children. We have been so sucked into this system, we do not even know we are in deception. You can be so deceived and misled that you are not even aware that is deception. Underdevelopment, security issues, marital issues, financial issues, joblessness, all of these things are symptoms of subscribing to a philosophy and a way of life that is antichrist and not built on life. That tree of life and the tree of the knowledge of good and evil, it was just a diplomatic way to say the tree of life and a tree of death. Because the end of it is death. There is a way that cement right to a man. He says, but the end thereof are the ways of death. As I counsel people, I am coming to the conclusion that if we do not re-examine our philosophies, there is no hope. This issue is bigger than counseling. This issue is bigger than laying on of hands. This issue is bigger than a church service or a conference. This is a deception that is institutional. And it will take people who understand the Holy Spirit. Listen carefully. People who understand the ways of God to summon the courage to say, no, something is wrong. My grandfather followed this way. My father followed this way. Now a system is forcing me to follow that way. And you turn and say, no way. And receive the courage to fight to victory. The contentions that will come by your refusal to eat of that tree. Write this down. The world system that advocates this tree of good and evil thrives on three major things. The world system, that means the antichrist system of operation, unfortunately that our society is built upon, thrives on three things. Number one, on godliness. On godliness. 
today's world, our civilization today is against godliness. Let me explain to you what that means. That means to do well in today's world, it is mandatory you must act like there's no God. Are you getting what I'm just saying now? If you want to do well in today's world, you have to indoctrinate yourself and culture yourself into acting as though God does not exist. And the world today will applaud you. That means that this Babylonian system, this tree of the knowledge of good and evil is strangling away God consciousness from all of us and from the fabric of society. The world system thrives on godlessness. That means that the more you are aligned to this world, it will make you in a way and manner that you do not see value for God again. By destroying every Christian monument in schools, for instance, that can help men be aware. Are we together now? All those things are strategies to make sure that our children, the same way this little boy now does not know what a typewriter looks like, that is the same way one day people will not know anything about God. You will say, in the beginning was the word. They said, is that a novel? They say, what do you mean, is that a novel? That's King James. They say, well, I'm not aware of what you are saying. That is the goal of this system. That a day will come when, when you say Bible study, it's like you are telling a child lemonade, and he says, what is that? What is Bible, sir? I don't know what Bible is. And you say, it's a book that contains the words of God. He said, who is God? We will get there if a church does, if the church does not rise and listen to what I'm telling you. Today you have a program on TV. You mention Jesus or mention God, they edit it. But they can leave explicit words in movies even for children. Don't mind that rating thing they write. That means something is wrong. And the church is watching and we do not understand that we are being forced to eat from the tree that contains good and evil. Ungodliness. Right now, this is not, this is not a generation of ignorance again. Satan has stopped using ignorance as a strategy. This generation is too enlightened to entertain ignorance. So he has started marketing this good and evil. It's difficult to keep someone ignorant now because this is an inquisitive generation. They want to know. And so Satan says, instead of hiding the knowledge, let's not hide it again. Let us corrupt it and market it. So knowledge is available and affordable. But largely, let me tell you, my brothers and my sisters, over 70% of the information that mold and make the mind of people is a Babylonian information that contains good and evil. Are we together? You hear what they teach your children in school. On one side, you are happy that the children are learning biology. But on the other side, you know you are in trouble because good and evil. Are you get what I'm saying now? Yes. Ungodliness. We have to preserve God consciousness. And the tree of the knowledge of good and evil will never, never preserve God consciousness. When I was growing up, 90% of our discussions were around school and God. That was it. Right now, the average young child, the average teenager will talk about applications, apps, almost a thousand times before anything spiritual will be mentioned. Not God. Most young people are now spiritual and are now sociological, not spiritual. They are doing everything. That's why they are promoting all the human activities that neutralize God consciousness, like sports, like music. These are platforms that um that is 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 very very is very very civil and so it doesn't allow the things of god are you getting what i'm saying now it's a strategy and god is waking us up on godliness number two
these three of the knowledge of good and evil that makes up the world system operates by distorting spiritual patterns write it down this system operates by distorting spiritual patterns is one of the most dangerous effects of this wisdom of the world it distorts spiritual patterns I want you to listen carefully Isaiah chapter 5 we'll read from verse 20 to 24 Isaiah 5 20 read with me we're reading from 20 to 24 one to read woe to them that call evil good talk to me and good evil that put darkness for light uh-huh and light for darkness that put bitter for sweet and sweet for bitter what kind of a generation is this that replaces everything is an overhaul nothing was spared if it is good this society calls it evil if it is light they call it darkness if it is sweet they call it bitter verse 22 21 woe to them that are wise in their own eyes and prudent in their own sight uh-huh woe to them that are mighty to drink wine and men of strength to mingle strong drink 23 we justify the wicked for reward and take away the righteousness of the righteous from him do you know what this means that means they force you through their life and they compel you to bend until you are out of god's pattern he said they take away the righteousness of the righteous from him so you send your child to school as a responsible young boy from a christian family and a system has been built by the time that boy is three years in that school it has taken away the righteousness from the righteous four next verse therefore as fire devoured the stubble and flame consumed the chaff so shall their root be as rottenness and their blossom shall go up as dust notice that they once blossom but the bible said it will go up as dust because they have cast away the law of the lord of hosts and despised the word of the holy one of israel in god's design and in his dealings with men he always creates patterns listen carefully god's patterns are his methodology his way of achieving his will it is not enough to obey god we must understand his pattern there is a pattern for wealth and finance in the kingdom there is a pattern for marriage in the kingdom there is a pattern for ministry there is a pattern for success but now we have a system that is forcing an ideology and even upon believers that makes us to violate patterns are we together now one of our dear ladies here she may be following online i think a few a few maybe about a month ago she left for the u.s and when she got to the u.s i think it was just like a few days or a week she just called me and i know there are people from u.s following so i, I, I don't mean to insult any culture but she told me that apostle there's there's something wrong she said my roommates are all lesbians and there is a problem if i'm not mistaken i hope i'm right because she said it's like they are supposed to be believers and now she has to relate with them because there is not like here just for showing any sign of um discrimination as it were they can sue you and of course if you are not not a citizen of that nation they can take you out immediately and this lady was confused completely confused and saying what is all this i come from a place in zaria where even the person who is not doing well can be a pastor somewhere else and now i'm faced with roommates that are vocally part of a system let me tell you 
I don't mean to insult anyone, but I told you most of those things are symptoms of a problem. The problem is that we have deviated from God's pattern. Are you getting what I'm saying now? Yes. The divorce rate in marriages is something that is scary, including Christian marriages. One out of every two marriages will not last 10 years. Now, please don't feel bad if anything has happened to your marriage. I'm teaching here. Are you getting what I'm saying? Do you know why? Because two of you come, husband and wife, people have created their own patterns. Call good evil and evil good. It was God who defined how marriage works. Society has now mentored people into creating their own laws about marriage. Is it not arrogant for you to come and meet something and not consult the person who created it and change the laws? It's like coming to my house and meet my tap running and I come back and see that you've rewired the tap to the back of the house. By what authority did you do this? In my house? So we have done it in ways that we cannot imagine. In my, my laptop, I have the photo of a woman who married Sardine. Big Sardine, not the small one you use. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Are we together? Side by side, you see them there. I have it in my laptop. Now, let me tell you this. Believers, we are civilized people. I'm not, I'm not those kind of people that will teach you to not, not, no, no, no. But I'm saying something is wrong. We have to admit that something is wrong. Are we together now? These people have their ideas. They have money, they have everything, yet the marriage does not work. And they are wondering. Because everybody, the Babylonian system has indoctrinated this lady. You are not under any man, you are a lady, you are, you know, you are a wonderful person. Don't let any man look down on you. Society is these men are looking down on women, this and that. And the lady says, yes, if it's because of your money, I will get my own job. I will buy my own car. I can be lord of myself. If you drive me, I can go and get my three-bedroom flat. We think it's a nice thing. Because if a lady proposes this in the world, they clap for you. They stand up and wave their hands. And God sits on his throne and says, this is not what I designed. What are you designing like this? Already as I'm saying it, you see how surprised me. How many of you have been sucked into it? As I'm saying it now, it's paining you. Which is a sign that God is delivering you. Because already... You can see how the thing has sucked us. And then the men, we have our own. We are even the ones that are more sucked into this thing. Because we need money, we need to provide. And we have deviated from God's pattern completely. Right now, respect in marriage is based on who is richer. Not what God said. I'm working, I'm earning 30,000. You are earning 10,000. You are not worth my respect. And society says, yes. One, one life coach somewhere who is not born again, has never read the Bible, is now writing books and pushing it to the church because they know we buy everything. Are we together? Yes. Something is wrong. A distortion of patterns. Let me tell you why patterns are important. Because patterns forerun the glory. When patterns are violated, the glory will never be seen. Never be seen. There are ways today, my brothers and my sisters, I don't say this in any sarcastic way, but there are ways. Go for pastor's conferences and see how they teach men to raise money to run churches. You will be amazed and you will be surprised because there is a pattern. A Babylonian system is marketing a strategy. Remember that the ark of God was supposed to be carried by a formula. A man decided to invent a system to say, let's, let's make it easier for men. And that man died. What did he do that was wrong? He only changed patterns. It was violation of pattern that made a man lose his throne. Saul in the Bible. It was not in his office to offer sacrifices. But because Samuel was wasting time and the people started putting pressure on Saul. Saul said, what nonsense is this priesthood thing? 
get me everything let me offer sacrifices as soon as he offered sacrifices samuel came and said what have you done he said you have done foolishly you would have allowed me to come and do this and god would have established your throne forever but now that you have done this your throne is taken away from you and samuel tried to weep and cry and god who is full of mercy said how long will you weep seeing that i've rejected saul as king in other words this guy is out of my program god your god every time the reason why we never see the glory of god in our churches we never see the glory of god in our families could it be that we are there eating of the tree of the knowledge of the of good and evil and is indoctrinating us to act and believe in ways that are violating god's pattern Gideon began to cry and told the angel he said why do we not see the miracles that our fathers told us and he began to tell Gideon there are idols there are things to be destroyed when it was time for Elijah to command fire from heaven he didn't just say fire come he said set me 12 altars there is a pattern set me 12 altars put water on it put this and fire came Cain and Abel offered sacrifices. One was accepted. One was rejected. God is not only the God of the heavens. He's a God of patterns. God looks at how you did it. Not just that you did it. Hmm. Patterns. Thank you, my dear. Exodus chapter 25. We'll read verse 9 and then we'll read verse 20. Very quickly, please. God is taking us somewhere tonight. According to all that I showed thee, listen, after the pattern of the tabernacle, this was the building of the tabernacle in the wilderness, and God was instructing Moses that according to all that I showed you, after the pattern of the tabernacle and the pattern of all the instruments thereof, so shall thou make it in other words it was not moses's idea a blueprint was given his assignment was to replicate it there are many things see in your dealing with god you will not need too much of creativity you will need obedience it is when you are executing his will on earth that you will need in your dealing with god there are few things that will be your idea I know we don't like this how you know you are working with God is that a major part of your dealing is yes sir yes sir when it becomes in my opinion that's not God you are working with hmm. creativity is not for the secret place creativity is a system of dominion you don't bring creativity when you are in the secret place it is obedience it is your heart opening to say lord not my will but your will be done exodus 25 25 verse 40 and look that thou make them after what their pattern which was shown you not which you guessed not which you guessed a pattern was shown you make sure that you make it after their pattern very quickly give us chapter 40 and verse 16 40 and verse 16 i'm showing you that god is a god of patterns 40 and verse 16 read with me please one to read thus did moses uh-huh according to all that the lord commanded him go to verse 33 we're reading now verse 33 to 35 he says and he read up the court he's about to finish now listen carefully round about the tabernacle and the altar and set up the hanging of the court gate read the last sentence everyone one to go so moses finished the work he finished everything according to pattern next verse and then a cloud covered the tent of the congregation God supervised until he followed the patterns to the dot. When Moses finished the work, he said, God, I finished. God said, I'm ready to come. The cloud covered the tent of the congregation and the glory of God filled the tabernacle. Next verse. And Moses was not able to enter into the tent of the congregation. Why? Because the cloud abode thereon 
and the glory of God fill it. If the glory of God is not upon your church, could there be an explanation that something in the building or the system of that church is disaligned with divine patterns? Because if it is built according to pattern, the glory of God is like a stamp. You obeyed to the latter. If I look at your family and I do not see the glory of God, there is a pattern that you are not following. Are we together now? I can look at your family and I see chaos here and there. Husband beating wife, wife beating husband, I must kill you. I tell you, someone is violating patterns. If both people walk with divine patterns, there will be glory. That means the glory of God is also a confirmation that his patterns have been duly followed. Every time you finish that which you do, it's important to look around and find out where is the glory of God in it as proof that this was done according to pattern. Could it be that the joblessness that is plaguing young people in Nigeria could it be the reason why many of us are languishing in certain intense levels of hardship we may be well meaning but could it be that we are violating divine patterns everybody say patterns say it again say patterns so the tree of the knowledge of good and evil causes you to be distorted from God's pattern there is a way God designed that marriage happens if you have to go on Facebook and WhatsApp to start doing this, you may get a beast who is first a man before he becomes a beast, which is consistent with the way that tree works. Is first good before evil. So you meet somebody on Facebook and he says, I'll go and see your parents. You are the lily of the valley. Are we together now? And that person later becomes the beast of your destiny. Why? Because patterns. God designed marriage, come please, to be one man and one woman. Don't feel bad. By the time this guy says one woman is not enough and brings another woman, everybody say patterns patterns start fighting from the realm of the spirit because the way God designed this thing is such that one woman the woman has to be alone for you to see the best of her in marriage by the time it is now two or ten or five something must go wrong it doesn't matter what they sign patterns have been distorted are we together when a man of 50 years old is writing Wayek, everybody say patterns have been distorted. Now, listen, I'm not, I'm not being sarcastic. I'm saying that it is usual for that man to not concentrate. He is not supposed to be that alert and focused just like that. Because that longevity of time has accommodated too many things that are more serious than the subject matter so it is good that a young man bear his yoke in his youth lamentation chapter 3 that god says young men walk your walks while it is day night will come when you cannot walk it's a pattern starting early in life is a pattern that's why when the spirit of delay comes upon a family it makes sure that the first person is in is writing ssc at 25 it's not about delay satan is doing everything to make you go out of pattern it is why god in his mercy introduced a mystery called restoration are you seeing that now restoration is doing something to your life to bring you back in pattern when a woman has been barren and she's 60 years old with no child the devil knows that according to the normal course of life there will be a problem giving birth or at least giving birth to a very healthy child are you seeing that now satan knows that god is a god of patterns and so he 
supplies us knowledge that makes us to be and act in ways that continue to be defiant to God's pattern because his advantage in our life is that when we are out of pattern he doesn't need to pray against us the glory was designed to locate patterns and confirm it is God speaking to us I'd like you to look at your family as you are sitting down and suddenly realize that could this be why we never saw the hand of God in our family we were Christians oh my father my mother loved God served God with all his and heart Lord why is this family this way why are we not seeing your glory I'm showing you we are eating of a tree and the more we keep eating of that tree every time the glory comes to your house it cannot rest and the glory continues to search for a resting place and sometimes it will wait for one full generation until you arrive that's why some of you are standing up to say lord that glory must rest that glory has been hovering around my family since 1951 and nobody has aligned enough to allow that glory come lord see he said lord and now arise oh lord he said come to your resting place until then god said i don't have a place to rest and solomon said no way we have to make for you make for you a place i can tell you i understand a bit about the glory of god i know why many people do not experience the glory there are spiritual patterns Babylon. you eat of that tree notice what happened to adam as soon as they ate of the tree what happened the glory lifted it was the glory that covered them they didn't even know whether they were naked or not they didn't need clothes because the shekinah of god covered them as soon as they ate of that tree imagine that every day you are eating of that tree think of what is happening to your life and think of what you are programming for your children's children already so every time our fathers kept bowing in that shrine they thought they were just paying homage but something Ichabod the glory continued to move back and back and back and back and back by the time you came to the scene there was no glory again 11 ladies beautiful ladies no man to marry them 13 ladies no child let me tell you my brothers and my sisters it's not just about prayer when we return to the pattern is with a rush the glory will come when Moses finished not when he started God kept watching finish it and let my glory come you know from my paternal side i never saw any blessed person i think the most blessed person was my dad and it's not like he was any blessing i said what kind of cause is this how can you be so hard working and love god my father was a very honest man loved god but i i said no no someone has to be angry oh this night and say no my family has been eating from a tree eating from the tree can mean bowing to an idol eating from the tree can be an indoctrination that your salary is where your wealth is you think it's a nice statement but it's something that has been sold to you so when you hear things like all blessings come from god they only pass through men it's an ideology that fights everything you've been taught about job oh the boss said i can waste your life now and you say sir it's true ah, and the psalmist said i lift up my eyes to the hills i'm not confused i know where my help comes from who oh, is an arrogant man born of a woman that sits on a chair and says he'll frustrate you when there is god an average man of god has been taught now that there are things that if they are not in your church members will not come please don't get me wrong i know if there's any man of god phoning I'm, I'm an excellent person but right now we are doing a lot of nonsense that will not help us see the glory of god nonsense members can drink tea they can eat rice they can eat yam and go because there is a pattern and i if i be lifted that's the pattern i will 
Paul may plant, Apollos may water, but it's not given to man to bring increase. Increase is a mystery that only the Lord of the harvest knows the formula. You say something now, people insult you and say you are arrogant, but the result is not showing. I want you tonight to start thinking the convictions that I hold, where did it come from? Where did it come from? There are many well-behaved ladies in this place. You started very well with God until you read a book. Until you joined some group of friends who told you, blast gentlemen, don't talk. Anybody that talks, just give it to them. Don't be doing like a mumu girl. Men are not like that. I say, eh, that's how it works. You ate something and from that day your glory went away. And the kind of men who would ordinarily come, you find out that men increase, but it's all nonsense kind of men. Men that you cannot carry to your parents. Something, a pattern has gone wrong. The one factor that was the reason why the glory of God was on you, the devil now came and lied to you. Why be respect yourself, be a well-behaved girl, be all of, let me tell you, if you act like you're a mumu naive girl, men will not come. And you say, okay, I must reinvent myself to be a happening lady. And that was the day your destiny helper went away. There are many pastors, some of you here, have come here for impartation. Let me tell you, I submit to you. I am a student of patterns. There are things that I know. I found them. God taught me. I said, Lord, I will never bend to them. Years ago, I remember saying some things. And I was insulted. I was criticized because of it. I said things about the glory of God. I said things about increase. And I said the way we are going, if people do not understand these things, they will pay for it. People laughed at me. And today is unfortunate for many people. People see some of the results that God is producing. It's not a charm. It's patterns. When a pattern is complete, listen to me. My sister, you may come from a family where nobody knows you. Stay with God's pattern. Let his glory rest on you. You will join people to wonder and say, God, what, what am I doing? And God says, I'm the God of patterns. Man of God, follow God's pattern for ministry. And you will be afraid of what God will do through your life. We like cutting corners. Cutting corners. Cutting corners. I want a ministry, but I want it now. I want power, but I want it fast. I want this, but I want it now. And we find out that somewhere along the line, the patterns are distorted. And we never see the power of God. Are we together? You do what I'm telling you now to do and see how society will laugh at you. Because we have trained people that the more godless we are, the more happening they are. You see that? So this gentleman now is in the house and somebody advises him, don't give your wife money because if you give her money, she will not respect you. That's what is in vogue now. A demonic pattern. Because loyalty and submission was supposed to be by revelation, not manipulation. Now the man is manipulating the woman. And one day her own Ahitophel too will advise her. And as soon as he advises her, she will get a job and start a business and arrest the husband to prove to him that I am the man in the house. My brothers and my sisters, we are in trouble if we don't return to pattern. Yes. Many marriages do not work because the men are not under authority. You've heard me say it. I have read a lot of books about marriage and I respect it. But I submit to you that many of the books are dealing with symptoms. Do you know, just for a man not having the fear of God, there are hundred problems that can arise from that relationship. Now, you can write a book to solve those various hundred problems, but the root cause is that this man is not saved, period. When a man is not saved, the tendencies that can come are infinite. 
when a man is not under authority he can beat the living daylight out of this woman and say who cares i'm the lord of my life i don't listen to no man the arrogance of nebuchadnezzar it's a pattern why do doctors specialize why do they look at certain sicknesses and they can show you immediately because the sicknesses have patterns malaria has a pattern typhoid has a pattern a doctor can do this just do a quick examination and say wow quickly you need to see a consultant something is wrong without the patterns they have been taught to identify patterns that's it there is a pattern that gives you wealth in this kingdom many believers will not listen the world has its own system it will work but wait to see what it will give you later on it will give you high blood pressure you will be a liar you will be a thief you will destroy your life destroy the integrity of your family so two of us come Sheung. two of us can stand right now and I have I have some money here I have 1,000 naira watch this he got his one hold your own hold it high he's holding he got his 1,000 by a Babylonian system and I got my 1,000 from a kingdom system you would think that two of us are holding 1,000 no he's holding 1,000 minus five years gone in his life That's why the blessing of the Lord make it rich and added. That means there is a kind of blessing that adds to. If the blessing of the Lord adds not, that means there is a type that you can get, but with it you will get this. That's what happened to many of our parents. By the time they are 55 years, he found out that because of Horsley and the way he pushed like that, he's about to retire, but he's not hearing again. Come on to me, Jesus. Let's listen to him now. Let's listen to Jesus. Come on to me, all you that are weary and heavy laden. He promises that he will give you rest. This is what many people can kill for. Look at this. This thing you see. Many people have left God because of it. Many people are going to hell fire because of it. Yet they never find it. And God tells you, look, there is a way I can give you this such that you will serve me. And the world says, the way I give you this is the, the more you denounce Jesus, the more I give it to you. So you keep saying, Jesus, I don't love you. And Mammon says, that's how it works. By the time you have plenty of this, you have not only left the cross, you have left everything God. So when you come and say, I can have this and yet have Jesus, Babylon says you are joking. But this is what God is training you into doing. That you can have this and if God says, let it go, you drop it. Because you are aware that this is not your true value. Your true value is Christ. We must return tonight to patterns otherwise we are going to suffer remember that every result is governed by something that something is a pattern the result you get is brought by the glory of God I've seen a little bit of the glory of God and I know when a man has found a pattern for the glory give up on that man if you want to try to take the glory in that area, you are wasting your time. For as long as the pattern is kept, the glory will always, always, without fail. Tomorrow I'm in Lagos, preaching at a conference, and I know that their lives will never be the same because there is a pattern. It's not because I'm Joshua Selman. Ah, Elijah said, bring me 12 stones. I know how to make fire come from heaven. Man of God, you are not a blessing to your members if you do not understand the pattern that brings the hand of God. There is a pattern that men do on earth that brings favor. There is a pattern that brings speed. There is a pattern that brings the anointing. I was glad when they said unto me, let us go to the house of the Lord. 
I was glad. There is something in the house of the Lord that changes the lives of people. But today we are eating trees that make the things of God. Do you know the tree of the knowledge of good and evil teaches you that it is in the abundance of hustling you prosper. Have you had those teachings? And have you seen people write books on them? Have you not read in your Bible that except the Lord builds a house, they labor in vain that build it? The world will laugh at you for saying that. Have you not read again that the Lord said, except he watches over a city, he says, that the watchmen watch it in vain. He said it is vain to wake up in the morning and to sleep late in the night. Does that look like somebody's life that you know? Wake up in the morning, sleep late in the night, only to eat the bread of sorrow. He said, but he gives his beloved sleep. And you see, when you struggle and it does not work, you will be angry at those who are getting it easy because patterns are supposed to create spiritual ease. So you can step into a place and gyrate like a herbalist. The power of God will fall. He is going to fall. And you keep looking at the ladies and nobody is shouting and you are angry. What is no, no sister shouting? And yet, someone comes with the ark and knows how to put 12 stones together. And all of a sudden, you are hosting a dimension of glory. And you stand and watch and say, how are these people doing it? He has to be the devil. No, sir. Patterns. Oh, God, you are my God. And I will ever praise you. Oh, God, you are my God. And I will ever praise you. Oh God, you are my God. And I will ever praise you. I will seek you in the morning. And I have loved everybody is doing just listen to me and follow me I was stupid enough to follow Lord where do I go this way Lord where do I go I remember when the Lord told me put koinonia messages the audio put it on your Facebook page and let it go Lord what is that many ministries raise their money to run the church primarily through the media arm the media arm of every ministry is one of the major ways that God blesses them with. Lord, if you are doing that, how then are you going to bless the ministry? But Lord, how do you put a message on Facebook and then you said you will give it wings? The patterns of God. He uses the foolish things. My brothers and my sisters, listen to me. A lady was talking to me that she was somewhere, one of our ladies, she used to be in the worship team, that she was somewhere on Kekena Pep. And the person on Kekena Pep was playing my message. This was in, I think it was in Wari or so or Bielsa. Now, that one is no more advertisement. There is a finger. When you see results that are produced by patterns, you will know that this one is God. The pride of our generation will never allow us to humble ourselves and say, Lord, I don't know. I don't know many young people do not know how to succeed and they will never go to God they will consult with all kinds of equally proud people like them and come up with all kinds of formula that is not consistent with the ways of God that formula may have worked in 1970 but I guarantee it will not work in today's world 
listen young people in nigeria we need to receive the formula for our advancement because computers have, re have replaced men a day will come when almost everything will be done by computers i don't know what the employment issue will be but there is there is a system in this kingdom when there was famine only two sets of people were spared the king and the prophet the king and the prophet did not go through famine any other person in between suffered the squalor of it Alagbara, you are the mighty God, and you are so rich. You are the glorious Alagbara. There are people who will tell you about our teachings that they can stand and sit strangers i shared with you the testimony of a gentleman that bought flash new flash in the case flash drive bought a new flash drive in the case like that given to him the gentleman opened it went to slot it in his laptop and there was koinonia messages brand new flash because it's not men that market this thing they are spirits Ask Jacob in the house of Laban. Do you not see that there was a pattern that made Laban left for three days? How many days? Three days. He came back after three days and saw that his cattle had changed in three days. Do animals get pregnant in three days? But a spiritual pattern was downloaded to the earth realm and things change. That means there is something we can receive from heaven remember a popular scripture in this ministry knowest thou the ordinances of heaven and canst thou establish the dominion thereof in the earth there is a pattern my brothers and my sisters listen to me i want you to be careful what everybody calls the way did you hear what i said don't be afraid of being controversial be careful what everybody says is the way this is how people make it in life this is how people marry these days no sir many of our young children have been destroyed right now in churches because in a bid to create a western or a 21st century context we are robbing these young children of the quality of knowing god look at islam they have not changed their pattern the way they train children regardless whether it's in saudi arabia or whatever the pattern is the same they know the potency of that formula is god speaking to us let me give us one more and then we'll pray is god speaking to someone tonight so if i have not seen the glory of god in my life the explanation tonight is that there could be that i am eating I am partaking of an information that may be mainstream it may be popular when I talk to this my adorable gentlemen they are absolutely great people they are going very far you see that yes they are going very far but you see there is a pattern that people believe if you follow you will rise fast believe me it is nonsense any pattern that is not consistent with God's word will not take you far it will throw you up and crash you down that's why you see people rise and shine for two years and then they say their time has come and gone but is that what your bible says doesn't it say that the path of the just talk to me is as a shining light so what is this up today and down tomorrow because there is a pattern if you have to put money in my pocket and bribe my way to making the world know you your success is at the mercy of my loving you the day i don't love you you are in trouble but when god is the one who leads you you will be surprised when you hold my hands everything becomes possible when you
There's one man is in our village. He has the gift. He has the gift. All you need to do, he has the gift. And the woman says, no, I know God's pattern. I know that that tree carries good. So it's possible to go there and have a child. But something will come. With that child will come the trouble in your family. And then the woman stays and uses her faith. And the day God is ready to visit her, God will not give her a child. The woman will carry t triplets, one child being equivalent to 10 children. You know that there are people who alone, they are equivalent to a nation. They give birth to one child. Because of that one child, somebody you have been trying to see for years comes to visit you. Five people get a job because a child was born. Is that a child? A child that does what a CEO cannot do? A destiny helper from birth. One week from birth is already a destiny helper. And as adult as we are, we couldn't help ourselves. A child helps us. That's not a child. That's a miracle. That's a breakthrough. Number three. The tree of the knowledge of good and evil thrives on self-centeredness. I want you to listen to my message, Christ-centeredness. I preached it, I think, earlier this year. The language, I. I want it my way. My way is the language of Babylon. My way is proof you are eating of that tree. Men who eat of that tree have a way they talk. It must be my way. Listen. Listen. Oh, generation of young people, let's listen my way my formula we live in a generation right now where there is an obsession for having things happen our way i want it my way and we take it a step further to force others to also do it our way that's the height of selfishness now most great relationships are destroyed because of the I factor, myself, I want it my way. It has to be as it pleases me. Unfortunately, when you come to the kingdom, you learn that the more I goes down, the more glory rises. And I, Jesus, if I be lifted up, not you, John said that I will decrease. Not just him, that self, I, decreases and that you increase James chapter 1 verse 1 and 2 self-centeredness is one of the biggest tragedies of eating of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil James chapter 3 Give us 14 and 15. The Bible says something very instructive. It says, listen, but if ye have bitter envyings and strife in your heart, glory not and lie not against the truth. 15. It says this wisdom. So there is a wisdom that is as a result of self and greed and bitterness my selfishness and my greed can make me act in a way that looks like wisdom but the motivation are we together now the motivation for that wisdom is bitterness self-centeredness the bible says that kind of wisdom descended not from above remember the knowledge of the good of good and evil it says but is earthly is sensual and is devilish so simply because I want to be the one to shine, I can say, Sam, um, because there is a gun inside that room, 
I said, Sam, why don't you go to that room and go and help me carry a basket? But the goal is so that he will be implicated, so that he will get out of the way for me to shine alone. It looks like wisdom, but the motivation is self-centeredness. The Bible says that wisdom is devilish. Our world today, and sadly, even in ministry, is full of self-centeredness. Romans chapter 16, quickly please. Verse 17 and 18. While I was studying this, I found this scripture and it blessed me. Tonight is a very strong admonishment and I want you to listen carefully. 16 and 17. Okay. Read with me. One, two, go. Now I beseech you, brethren, mark them which cause what? Division and offense contrary to the doctrine which ye have learned and do what avoid them next verse for they are such that serve not our lord jesus but they are and by good words and fair speeches they deceive the heart of the simple your bible so i can be looking for money and I can say, do you know what? Um, the Lord gave me a prophetic instruction that all of us are going to do this and that and that. All of us are going to raise two two thousand and come and touch my shoe, and your life will change. And God knows He didn't give that instruction. I just calculated that if there are five thousand people here, and everybody gives two two thousand, highest plus or minus, I've already done the mathematics. And then I come and say, oh, God said no. Their belly is their God. Their belly. A man's belly can be his God. Meaning you can serve your stomach. It's amazing what people do so that they can feel satisfied and don't care the effect on others and on the kingdom. That's why people can kill. I can look at this gentleman and plot with an assassin. Look at this, these touts around that steal phones and do all of that. They can come and cut someone's hand, cut someone's neck to collect a phone of 25,000 and go and sell it 5,000. That is self-centeredness at work. The amount it would take for that victim to treat himself or herself may even be more than what they sold that phone for. But because they need to smoke now, everybody, even if it means death, listen, the moment the comfort of people does not become a factor for your consideration in your desire, you are self-centered. I want this. It must be my way. Brothers, we want this. I'm the man of the house. It must be my way. I stamp it. Ladies, I'm the woman of the house. I'm not the one that married you. You are the one that married me. It must be my way. And the naughty children come. I'm not the one that gave her to this. Them to they say their own. Selfishness. Are we together? Who Jesus himself stripped himself of his glory and came to the earth for God so loved, not himself, for God so loved the world. I have loved thee with an everlasting love and I have drawn you with my loving kindness. Selfishness. Lord, bless me so that everybody in my family will know that I'm not a small man. My elder brother who is shouting, Lord, bless me. Let me disgrace somebody for you. And God says, me? What do you think I am? Your mate? God sees my heart and I stand before you. I say this. I don't know how many things I do in my life 
considering myself as the chief benefactor God is my witness there are things I do for people today that I sit down sometimes and I think and I say Kai you man now I will. I talk to myself I said now for you Joshua Selman when you do not have a heart for God and people you are eating of the tree of life of knowledge of good and evil the tree of life takes the attention from you to others are we together now as a preacher if your whole church is around you what you can get from members how they can clap for you then that means you're in trouble let me tell you true ministry is not about the preacher it's about the blessed people that God brings so that they are raised so that they are equipped so that their lives are blessed I sit down here many times and I find tears when I see people stand to testify about the marvelous things that the word of God did for them listen I have found out that there are not many things that are important in life did you hear what I said I have found out that if you walk with God's ways there are not many things in your entire lifetime that are really important the complications that come that our lives bring are a web that the Babylonian system created for us so we have depression go to the village you will hardly find people with high blood pressure for some of them is because they are not enlightened but for some of them through the wisdom of the ancient they know the things that really matter did you know that when all is said and done in this life there are not many things that are important as busy as we are six o'clock in the morning we're on our way going 12 o'clock we're on our way going we do this and kill ourselves trying to eat trying to gain relevance i must buy the suit of 200,000 so that they will know and that self-inflicted pain leads you to do things that you have no business doing the moment you buy the 200,000 naira suit the person you want to wear it for you hear that they've made the person a senator and you feel stupid for laboring for one year to prove a point listen I have seen people who died trying to impress others I've seen people who died trying to create something in their life that it was not part of God's template for them meet a man on a deathbed right now and tell him what do you desperately want he will not say an estate he will not say I need an extra wife he will not say I need a male fast <clears throat> the only thing he will cry for is give me more time that means time is the most valuable thing and if God ever gives you time you have everything but we can waste time to look for what is less than time God gave you time to serve him time to love him time to seek him we were on our way going to um, I think it was while we we're going to movie while we we're going to the airport I was talking to my people and I told them, I said, guys, do you know that this you people's thing that you have forced me to buy has reduced my productivity by at least 10%? And they were amazed. I said, I don't have a problem with it. But um, you can sit down with somebody for 20 minutes and not even ask him his name because someone else is talking to you. And the person who is talking to you can even have gone to be with the Lord yet he's talking to you and somebody that is alive that can help you now you see that everybody people have had accidents typing text while driving people have done all kinds of things you see someone stand by the roadside shouting alone and just nodding with the earpiece these things are turning us into fools we have to remind ourselves that we are the highest of God's creation 
not against excellence. Don't get me wrong. But something is critically wrong that we must trust God for. It's a mind control system. It's controlling us. Right now when you stand, people look at you and they look at the phone you are holding. They see one kind of thing. They say, okay, you can stay there. That's a society that is depraved of the formula. So it puts pressure. Someone who is busy saving money for something is under pressure. Let me carry this. There are some you I, I thank God because it doesn't allow me to read the prayer items of miracle service. I'm sure I would have edited some before presenting them to God and said, This is nonsense. God, please don't waste your time. There's a crucial issue here. Someone is dying. Leave this iPhone issue and kill the person dying. So I can go to the place of prayer and spend three hours and that three hours is not because I love God and his purposes the three hours is because I'm manipulating the hand of God to meet my need oh God if you give me a good job and you give me an iPhone Lord you too you know you'll be glorified and God says how how present your cause there's no problem how will I be glorified I say well Lord they will respect me and say have you have you found out how many times you mentioned your name in that equation no, I'm not a careless God. I don't waste. And yet another person is doggedly involved. I said, Lord, I know. There is nothing that I have that is not yours. And while he's talking, God is telling someone, give him the latest iPhone every year. He said, God, I don't need it. He said, me, I want you to need it. That's God for you. It's amazing how God can take someone else's prayer request and give another person who really seeks him. Please, when you go to the secret place, don't waste your time. Learn how to get God's heart. Nobody comes with his heart without his hands. If you invite my heart, my hand will follow. If you invite my hand, I can keep my heart far while my hand goes. Get his heart. And you will see what his hand will do. It's the hand that will remove the heart and put it for you. But with that heart will come more than you have ever imagined. I see God do things in my life and I see God do things in this ministry that sometimes... Okay. This God, ba, I want you to believe him. I will never bow to Babylon. Is a corrupted system. I have seen the fallacy of this system. They are arrogant. Even one hour to their destruction, they will still be arrogant. They have deceived many people today. The Babylonian system has made many people to go to hell. Are you aware of that? There are people who would have been on their way to heaven, but a system deceived them. They deceive many of our parents to not love God. They embrace education, but they left God. Believing that they will be on their job forever, they forgot that demons are still on earth. While they were promoted, their inability to be connected to God didn't give them the opportunity to make exploits. And their lives are almost miserable today. Young people lie to themselves. If you take this and smoke this, you are a man. And it sells a system and you embrace it. Let me tell you, I introduce to you once again a system that is superior maybe controversial for a while but the results are like day and night you will rise above men men and watch life in wonder yes it's true I've made my choice I really have I'm not going to run my life based on a depraved system that has no respect for God I will not make money at the expense of my relationship with God no sir that is devilish money and God are not the same I will never allow any brilliant financial expert make me believe money and God is the same no in the beginning God not dollars in the beginning God not Naira in the beginning God not NMPC in the beginning God not APU in the beginning God and he says he's Omega too so whatever happens in between I'm sure that he's still there 
I live a very happy life, truly speaking, and I live a very peaceful life. Do you know why? Because I have learned in my life, there are very finite things I'm doing with my entire life. The things I'm doing with my life, they are not many. These are the things I live for. These are the things my entire course on earth will be for. I don't have time to waste on nonsense. There's no time wasting to prove any point. High blood pressure. If they tell you I have high blood pressure, well, pray for me, but I don't think it's true. I sleep like a baby. I wake up happily. This is the day the Lord has made. I rejoice and I am glad in it. Wake up tomorrow morning and stand by the road and see the anger of people. He's alone. Nobody's on the road yet. He's already angry. Honing alone and angry. This wicked world. Why is life like this? And God says, come up to me. Say, no, God, stay out of my life. And others even say, it's because you came into my life. Have you heard people say that? If the devil ever puts that thought in your mind, my brothers and my sisters, cast it. That is because God came into my life. That's why I'm not lifted. If it was not this God thing, I would have quietly bribed my way. I would have been in NMPC now. And people regret and make it look like God, you are a disadvantage. Bazankoma, Bazankoma, Nina Bazankoma. based on your own convictions if you don't fear God you can't make your children fear God they will fear what you fear you fear money you will raise your children like that whatever you serve is what they will serve you say as for me and my house as for me and my house I've made a choice I want you to join me make this choice make this choice as for me money will not stand between me and God faith will not stand between me and God this devilish system it doesn't mean we should run away from the world we cannot we are in the world but there is another philosophy listen we are praying in the world Sam come if Sam offends me the world teaches that Sam has offended you an eye for an eye make sure you do something that bends him so that he will know but when you come into the kingdom, it says to even pray for those who despitefully use you. Now, you do that. Let me tell you what the world calls you. Mumu, that's the name. That's the name invented for those who obey God that far. When you obey God that far, the world created a name for you. Everybody will be taking you for a ride. You are doing like an idiot. Revenge, Jare. And Bible says, vengeance is mine. And you are thinking, do I do, I do something for Sam? David had the opportunity to kill Saul and he left Saul. Ah, David, yes, your chance. David said, it doesn't work that way. There is a pattern. It is God that lifts. If I lift myself, I will keep myself in the palace. Give. That's the pattern of the kingdom. The wall says, take, search his pocket, remove everything and make it your own. That's how you rise. And that's the way many of us have taught. You can inflate school fees. Daddy, they've increased our school fees to 120,000. Print some letters that are a lie. And they give you and you say smartness. That's what the world calls it. In this kingdom, we call it death. Because God's system of justice will catch up with you for sure. Are we together? We are going to pray. Tonight is a wake up call that you should stop eating from the tree although it looks like it has good there is a more excellent way the tree of life an ideology and a proposition that is superior by far you will live long and live happy you will give and people will think you're a madman yet you are happy because you understand the system that your children surround your table they don't run away from you like you run away from your parents 
they come to you and love you that you can lock your house morning till night with your family members and say today we are worshiping god in this family not no time no time i need to make ends meet i need sharp sharp i need money there's one money somewhere and god is saying settle down god no 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 My, the, the person has called me to come now i need to come a man can receive nothing intelligent people hear me lean not on your own understanding it says in all your ways acknowledge him I am aware that I'm not very smart in myself I've given up on my own intelligence outside of God that's why I need him like a matter of life and death and I say, Lord, if you do not speak, my intelligence is too frail to give me the results that I seek. These are the kinds of people that he loves. When people stand and say, Apostle Joshua Selman, I remember that in this kingdom, there is only one person who is glorified. It is in his being glorified that you are also lifted. And then I turn, I say, Lord Jesus, this is unto you. And they say, no, shine. I say, no, we shine by letting him shine. Then he reflects his light on us. That's how we get our own. We don't shine and turn our backs at him. Say, Lord, I have brought you this as a trophy. And he says, you are doing this for me. Then I will lift you. Men of God, be careful. When men begin to clap for you and say, without you, the world will not move. Without koinonia, you cannot rise. I mean, come. With or without me, God's sovereignty remains. With or without me, his kingdom and his purposes will continue. If I die today, you will only cry for seven days. You will first try to raise me back. If I don't refuse to wake up, you will throw me. You will pray and pray and be tired. And one by one, you will start going and throw me in a grave. And cry one last time. And I tell you, that will be it. You will think your life will not continue. I will stand and I'm watching you with the angels. and say, bury that body and go. I want you to live a superior life a life that is free from fear if I fail what happens if I fail hey if I don't marry what happens if I don't have children no to deliver them who through the fear of death fear have all their lifetime subject to bondage if you want to buy a car today the reason should not be to prove a point Lord I need it for the comfort of my life for my family ultimately for your kingdom and God says pattern complied let the car come Lord I need it have my colleagues have car this small boy that was in SS1 when I was writing work and God said SS1 I was 33 years old when I saved the world I saved those who were also 70 years so if you are using age that carnality in you God will not prosper you and you will sit down there and say my colleagues and their children will come and be feeding you but if you say lord is for your glory and i've taught you how you know god is being glorified in your life whoever takes the shame is the one who has been taking the glory did you hear what i said whoever takes the shame god cannot be taking the glory while you take the shame many of us are so shame conscious we got it from our cultures shame shame ah let him take the glory and let him take the shame is his namesake is defending not my namesake you enter your sabbath lord is for your glory but like every other mystery in the kingdom there are there are we are mandated to understand the spiritual systems like i've always taught you uh, that our results depend upon i've taught you again that between your desire and the manifestation there are spiritual systems that connect them are we together i've told you the prophetic speakings of god that when god speaks he does not speak as though he's talking to a man he speaks as if he's talking to himself and so some factors will not be captured in his speakings it will take the spirit of revelation to break what god has said down so that you now see how you connect to that word god can look at you and say where is the house 
and you are sitting down wondering and say god who are you talking to and then he says i'm talking to myself you see that it is the spirit of revelation that will break that down so that you begin to understand that god does not speak like men knowing how god speaks is very powerful and it is a spirit of revelation that can help you and help you understand the communications of god are you with me tonight yes so there are mysteries secrets principles you can call them allocated for fruitfulness wishing fruitfulness is a waste of time just having a strong desire for fruitfulness is a waste of time it may be beneficial for a while because at least it can draw you to the secret place where you create the atmosphere for the spirit of revelation according to proverbs 18 and verse 1 it says desire through desire a man having separated himself it says he seeketh and intermediate with all wisdom but that in itself does not make you fruitful there is a lot of superstition in the body of christ ask the average christian do you believe in results fruitfulness productivity he or she will say yes and then you ask them how is it going to happen then you hear the variety of ignorance expressed through many well-meaning words but the bottom line is i don't know some will say jesus would do it and it looks very right just because the name of jesus is in part of that that erroneous statement jesus would do it others will say i will work hard i will do my best we are called to walk circumspectly everybody says circumspectly i told you that in a man's dealings with god creativity is almost not needed it is obedience it is when it has to do with dominion and kingdom legislature that is where your creativity comes the principles that make for your greatness are not left for your guessing they are there listen please when you get this you will stop wasting your time trying to crack your brain to know god trying to crack your brain to get truth no truth is not an idea it's not just the function of the mind you don't reason truth it is revealed there is a body of knowledge allocated for your results are you getting what i'm saying now yes if i have this bottle of water it's already there my assignment is to find it not to try to look for a way of 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 refining water and all of that and and and, and purifying it no it's already there this is how truth is don't think that truth is like many ideas that you crack your brain to just download no it is given and received otherwise it is not there if it is truth then it's not subject to the ideas of men it's something that comes from god if you get this you will be restful your assignment is to create the atmosphere for that truth to come lord what are the keys towards my fruitfulness and you remain there waiting like a waiter and the spirit of revelation comes and when it comes upon you the secret is revealed he says then the secret was revealed unto daniel listen every truth in the kingdom is revealed 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 every truth in the kingdom is revealed if it is truth then it was revealed whether the custodian of that truth admits that it was revealed or not the bottom line is that it was revealed so all of the spiritual activities that you go through for truth to come is only preparing the atmosphere for truth to come if the spirit of revelation does not bring you truth my brother and my sister you will end up conjuring sophia human wisdom ideas that cannot stand the test of time you can think ideas you can read books here and there and connect things but truth is revealed are we together And the Lord showed me something very powerful. And that's what I want to share with us. The mystery of fruitfulness is enshrined in a very silent parable that I want us to deal with right now. Mm. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Luke chapter 8. Mighty God. 
open our eyes and help us see wherever we stop tonight we'll pray luke chapter 8 we're reading the first 15 verses look at this we call it the parable of the sower it's not the parable of the sower it's a kingdom mystery hidden in a story and kept only to be revealed by the spirit of revelation just because you read this does not mean you will have an understanding now you can give a theological explanation as to what you think was happening you can even write a book about it but my brothers and my sisters this is sealed until it is open you will never see what is there are we ready now so let's read it came to pass afterwards that he went throughout every city and village jesus now preaching and showing the glad tidings of the kingdom of god and the 12 were with him verse 2 and certain women which had been healed of evil spirits and infirmities mary all of that together they went with him verse 3 um okay so you know the bible is just giving us the setting now of all of this i think it starts from verse 4 and when much people were gathered together and were come to him out of every city he spake but he spake by a parable he communicated but he used a parable to hide the secret what is the parable verse 5 a sower a sower went out to sow his seed follow the story a sower no name he went out to sow his seed so whoever this sower is we know that the sower was desiring fruitfulness are we together nobody just goes to sow seeds just because he feels like throwing seeds so one the sower had seeds number two the sower was a sower are you getting what i'm saying now listen a sower went out to sow his seed and as he sowed it's amazing that everything that happened by the wayside and the rest was called sowing it was not a mistake as he sowed some fell by the wayside listen and it was trodden down and the fowls of the air devoured it two some fell on a rock and as soon as it was sprung up it withered away because it lacked moisture and some fell among thorns and the thorns sprang up with it and choked it and other fell on good ground so we know that they didn't just fall that falling is sowing because even on the good ground it uses the same word so it's not like the seed maybe a bag with holes and then it fell until it got to the good ground no he sowed there is a soil called the wayside and he sowed there and he watched what happened now the first thing we have to be thankful for is that god did not hide the failures of this sower otherwise we would have been deceived about fruitfulness the bible gives us the complete story of the struggles of this sower to the end that we may have a balanced understanding are we still together let's continue our story the bible says an order fell on good ground and it sprang up and bear fruit an hundredfold and when he had said these things he cried jesus started crying imagine that as i'm teaching you now i just finished then i, I pause and i start crying when the bible says he cried in many regards he really cried it's not just that he lifted his voice loud he really cried why did he cry he that had ears to hear let him hear how can you finish talking to people my brothers and my sisters this is jesus adult jesus not the child learning something in the temple and you stand and teach people and then start crying do you know why because we're saying wow jesus are you this smart and jesus said oh dear Jesus was revealing through this story what was happening as he was teaching. It was not just something that happened one day alone. He was crying because there was a repetition of that story real time as he was talking. He being the sower. Are you getting what I'm saying now? Yes. Let's go back to verse 5 now. There are certain informations that we really, really need to believe and understand about this to help our fruitfulness. I, I just thought to explain this parable. 
notice that Jesus was so passionate about this parable he didn't allow any human being interrupt the interpretation he said I will interpret it myself there are many times he would not interpret certain parables he would just leave them but this one he says so that there is no confusion I will explain and in many times Jesus will leave some details out in explaining a parable but this one every single detail was explained to tell you his level of passion let's go to verse 9 let's finish and then we'll come back to verse 5 go to verse 9 and his disciples asked him saying what might this parable be are we ready now let's hear Jesus interpret his own parable and he said unto you hallelujah it is given to know the mysteries of the kingdom of God this is how he started interpretation Jesus interpreted now and I said, leave that matter. The reason why I will interpret this to you is because that thing you see is a coded message. But unto you, it has been given to know the mysteries of the kingdom of God. But to others in parables, that seeing they might not see and hearing they might not understand. Every time the Bible uses hearing twice, the second hearing is understanding. Are we together now? Next verse. Now, the parable is this i love jesus now the parable is this number one the sower the seed is the word of god mm. the seed is what not a business idea we are talking fruitfulness here the seed is not an investment plan listen carefully the seed that produces that harvest is the word of god number two those by the wayside are they. So those soils are people. Listen carefully. People who have hearts. The wayside are people. The rocks, all of that. They, they are different states of people's hearts. Notice, the goal is to produce result. But everything is happening inside a man's heart. It just uses a farm to explain. The entire labor of that fruitfulness is happening within the man, not outside the man. Are we together tonight? It says, those by the wayside are they that hear. Then cometh the devil and taketh away the word out of their hearts. Are we together now? Out of their hearts, not out of their life. He did not touch anything external. He just came into their hearts, removed the seed of the word of God, and left every other idea there. He didn't tamper with their ideas. They didn't tamper with all their plans. He just carried the word factor and left every other thing. And the Bible says, lest they should believe and be saved. They on the rock are they, which when they hear, they receive the word. So they are an improvement to the first set. The, set, the first set just heard. But the second set heard and received the word with joy. Remember what the Bible says about joy. It says they fulfilled the spiritual law here. With joy. And then the Bible says, and these have no root. Which for a while believe. And in time of temptation fall away. Next verse. And that which fell among tongues are they which when they have heard go forth and are choked. The first set heard. The second set heard, received, added joy. The third set heard and took action. Are you seeing now? All an improvement to themselves. And were choked with cares and riches and pleasures of this life and bring no fruit to perfection that means they started bearing fruit but the fruit could not mature the last set 15 but that on the good ground are they look look at look at this look at this they are they which in an honest and good heart having heard the word keep it and bring forth more fruit with patience they are not creative people what made them good was honesty that they had an honest and a good heart and by that honesty they were given an ability to keep it and the bible says they produce fruit 
four soils. Jesus is teaching on fruitfulness. Now, let me tell you this. Kingdom mysteries are very foolish and childish. They were designed that way. So that you have to be like a child to understand their operations. And that is the reason why many people never become fruitful and never get results. Because of the simplicity and the childlike character of spiritual communication. Are we together? Now, look at this. I am very grateful to God that the sower himself was not mentioned. The Bible never told us who the sower was. So the sower could be anybody. The Bible tells us what the seed was and the soils, the reaction, how they were planted and the results. Are you getting what I'm saying now? Now watch this very carefully. Do you know that we need to congratulate this sower first for his patience and endurance? Because whoever this sower was, it is true that he had to survive a lot. When you plant a seed, and then it dies then you go to another soil and it improves a little then you go to another soil and it improves a little the bible is very careful to let us see the transitions of this man and saying that all of it is part of an equation that can be captured in, on your journey to fruitfulness the same sower continued to do this until he got to a point what was the difference my brothers and sisters between the wayside and a hundredfold returns the wayside once upon a time now a benefactor of a hundredfold returns every soil was a description of a level of development and the corresponding challenges that would stop that man listen the first we see in the life of that person the wayside according to Jesus's own interpretation was a revelation of extreme carelessness you can know that whoever was the possessor of that heart condition was a careless person are we together now there was no discipline at all for the devil to you only enter a man's house and freely pick something without him unnoticed if the doors are not closed there is no system of guidance he did not place value on the information and there are people like that all over the world the moments the word of God comes to bless them, they, they, they are sympathetic to what the preacher is saying and they hope they are understanding. But quite honestly, they do not mind. Whether the information is lost or not, it has not become precious and valuable. They have not seen the usability of that information. And so the press to guard and to protect is not there. Are we together? You only protect what you have value for. If you do not have value for it, you may not protect it. When you finish eating your biscuit in a in a, um, the the uh, what they call it now, the the sachet or so, you throw that thing inside a dustbin. Why? Because it doesn't mean anything for you again. Listen, my brothers and my sisters, forget about true success and fruitfulness if. The word of God and the truths delivered do not mean a lot for you. You have to get to a point where you have a desperation, a hunger and a thirst for truth. Remember that we prosper according to the third epistle of John, according to the prosperity of our souls. And the Bible says that the end of your faith is the salvation of your soul, the renewal, the transformation of your mind. Are we together? Let me digress a, 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 a little bit and let's go back to our Ephesians chapter 3 and verse 20. Now unto him that is able to do exceeding abundantly. So God's ability here is not in doubt. The Bible says he is able to do. To be able means to be capable. To be able means it is within your power and it is within your jurisdiction. The Bible says he is able to do abundantly above all that we ask or think. Let's hold it there. Ask or think. I've explained it here. When you say ask or think, that means your asking and your thinking carries equal value in the spirit. That both your asking and your thinking are both prayer requests that rise to God. 
Your asking can be saying, God, bless me. And your thinking, say, God, I just changed my mind. Don't waste your time again. And that both of them are prayers that can rise to God. The Bible says God is able to do what we ask or do what we think. The thought realm was where the entire story in the parable of the sower was it it was an interaction in the soils of their hearts and their minds notice that when in the interpretation of those things very little was talked about their hands and any physical energy it was an activity of their minds that determined their failure or their success and even the extent of the success the deliverance that comes through transformation is a much needed deliverance in Africa, is a much needed deliverance around the middle belt, around the north. We need a radical shift in our perceptions and in our understanding, otherwise we will continue to mock and flatter ourselves and never give room for the fullness of the glory and the power of God to manifest. As someone what do you think is the key to lifting and rising? The next thing, they begin to tell you all kinds of stories. They tell you get a good job. They tell you do a good business. Others will tell you find a good relationship. You know, somebody who is a destiny helper, etc., etc. Those things only matter when these foundational things are in place. Listen, my brothers and my sisters. The beginning of your success is when the word of God arrives in your heart and in your mind. Not when you get a job. The starting point of all fruitfulness is the arrival of the word that lives and abides forever. Your heart and your mind. Write it down please. Your heart and your mind. A major part of your fruitfulness happens there. The manifestation. The manifestation is something that can happen suddenly. Man of God, listen to me. Businessman, listen to me. Career person, listen to me. The external factor plays a very, very, very small role in your overall success. You are a reflection of the prevailing power of the word within you. You are a reflection of the, the maturity of the word of God in your heart. And in your mind your heart and in your mind that means that the Word of God alters your perceptions the principles of the Word of God have gained entrance into your mind I'm more concerned about the mind part because that is where the stronghold of demons the stronghold of territorial limitations dwell many times when the devil wants to keep people fruitless do you know what he does he makes sure that the word of God cannot get to their mind, but every other thing can get to their hands. Sometimes Satan destroys you by giving to you. He makes sure that your mind never receives anything. Your mind can receive, can be barren while your pocket is full. And you will, anything that your mind has not received is not your own. If they pay you a salary that only got to your hand, you didn't receive a salary. And very soon you will know. No matter what it is, please hear me, my brothers and my sisters. If it has not been captured in your spirit and your mind, it's not yet your own. We possess things in our hearts and our minds first before our hands demonstrate that we have gotten it. Our generation is obsessed with having physical things because you see when you have physical things it can give a show of results are we together now and and it can suggest some form of progress but real progress is what happens in your spirit and in your mind say my spirit and my mind one more time say my spirit and my mind we're discussing fruitfulness now so that a brother and a sister aspiring to rise to be fruitful according to the word of God that you are not listen carefully that you are not allowed it is not given to you to really experience fruitfulness until 
that happens in your mind and your life and the bible says the first seed that must enter your life and enter your mind please hear me it is not an investment idea it is not a business idea listen it is not it is not it is not um uh, what do we call it products and services they only will make sense when the word notice that the bible never tells us that the farm did not have other things but when satan came he only searched for the word and carried it and left every other thing there the word of god is an incorruptible seed listen please my brothers and my sisters get this the word of god is an incorruptible seed the mindset it says let this mind be in you philippians chapter 2 let this mind be in you and verse 5 let this thinking let this perception be in you which was also in christ jesus philippians chapter 2 and verse 5 let this mind permit this mind permit this mindset to be in you which was also in christ every blessed person every world changer whether in the kingdom and in the secular will tell you that your point of advantage is not what you have in your pocket your point of advantage is not a car your point of advantage is not the house the point of advantage is the quality of the information that your mind like a womb has received and is able to incubate show me a man whose spirit and mind has received from god I show you a man who there is no power in existence that sustains the ability to destroy his fruitfulness it is first in your spirit and your mind while that is happening you're still with your trouser that you use needle and thread to sew doesn't matter while that is happening you are still in your one room with leakages everywhere stay there while that is happening there are no members coming to the church there are still you your wife and three other members don't worry you don't get the anointing just by hands laying on you the hands are only like a tap the hand stops on your head but the real impartation goes into your spirit When you drink water, your mouth allows the water to go in and it stops. But the water does not stop in your mouth. It gets into your system. If you leave water just in your mouth, it will not do much. You need to swallow it. When you swallow it, go to bed. Every other thing starts automatically. The moment it leaves your mouth, leave the rest. A system has already been designed. You don't just say, water now, where are you? Okay, you are here shift left no 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 don't worry when you swallow a drug you don't look at the drug and say drug please make no mistake it's my eye not my back there is a design your job is to get it within you and let it stay sometimes some drugs take longer than others to start working there are some drugs that can even cause you to be drowsy to go to sleep so that it can really work and then it will damage everything that it needs to destroy whilst working my brothers and my sisters listen to me the foundation of true success is not running around with proposals i have a proposal I, I need capital i need this i need that no the major work that anybody will do it's not even carrying certificates all around and say just give me a job yeah, and my life will change there's nothing wrong with those things those things are profitless when your mind is barren it will not make any difference it will only convince you sociologically that you are better than someone else but sooner or later you will see that your life does not recognize those activities as progress are we together now there are many pastors who think that ministry rises just because of connections and invitations if i can sing here or preach here or do this no no your real fruitfulness is within the richness of the word of god within you the quality of the wisdom your interaction with the wisdom of god everything that happens is only a revelation of what is going on within the parable of the sower the entire 
the entire story of that parable is about the hearts of men a sower and seed the word of god the living word joshua chapter one please give it to us and verse eight joshua chapter one moses is let's let's even start from verse five give us verse five we'll read down to verse eight there shall not any man be able to stand before thee all the days of your life as i was with moses so i will be with you i will not fail thee nor forsake you he's doing something to his mind he didn't give him a new knife and say this i sharpen this knife it can cut through trees no he's doing something to his mind that i am empowering your mind that if you can believe this no man will sustain an ability to stand before you all the days of your life and then verse 6 it says be strong and of good courage for unto these people shall thou divide look at god speaking there are giants so and god is telling him how to share the land not how to fight the giants in god's mind victory was settled i've given you victory not by giving you anything physical i did something to your mind that's your victory be strong in the Lord and in the power of his might. We win not just by physical fights. When our spirits and our minds agree, let every devil clear the way. It's true. Be strong and of good courage. For unto these people thou shalt divide. He didn't say you would die during war. I thought Joshua would say, come, oh God, assure me, these people have real knife. Will I die or I will live? Already, if God tells you you are going to share a land, it will be stupid to be asking whether you will die. God is saying, look, I've seen the end of it. Let me teach you how to share the land. Look, look at victors. Look at fruitful people discussing sharing the land, not fighting. We are talking about Jericho and other nations here. You are standing before a fortified city and God is saying, this is the slice. This one will go to this. Are you getting it now? So you see somebody that does not have Gary and is saying, this one will go to charity. This one is going to go to my parents. I have five siblings and I will take care of them. And you enter and say, what is happening? And you say, I'm planning. I'm planning my victory. You say you are planning your victory. Are you aware that your mother is in the hospital and we need just 20,000 to help her? You say, I'm already planning. I know that I will. Which I swear unto your fathers to give them. Seven. Only be thou strong. What is the requirement? Be strong. Not just be skillful. Don't get me wrong. These are factors, but I'm arranging them according to order of priority. Be strong and very courageous that thou mightest observe to do according to all the law which Moses my servant commanded thee. Turn not from it to the right hand or to the left that thou mayest prosper. This is God giving a man a recipe for success. And he's not saying anything about the war he's about to fight. He's not saying follow through the back door. And not, the instruction for victory would come later. He's giving him a winning formula. Verse 8. This book of the law shall not depart from out of your mouth but thou shalt meditate therein day and night that thou mayest observe to do according to all that is written therein for then thou shalt make thy way prosperous who will make your way it's not only god that makes a way he can empower you to make your way and if you are not ready to make your way prosperous it's a commitment it's a call to responsibility and thou shall have good success brothers and sisters life is systemic we are not the first to enter any realm we desire not at this level god has empowered people listen god has empowered people in business in ministry spiritual life whatever area god has listen god has allowed us to see the scars of people his his the bible is not just full of triumphs it's also full of failure and scars the bible says that all scripture were written for our learning that we through the comfort of scripture might find hope so god allows the 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 the, the, the record of many people's limitations so that you will learn be fruitful it's 
a command. Be fruitful. Oh, thou sower, be fruitful. And you're saying, God, change my life. Change my life. And you're thinking in your mind, capital. Oh, God, capital. Just give me 500,000. And God, you can't even go out of my life. And the devil is saying, I like this kind of prayer. I like anything that takes the word of God out of a man's life. He will leave the capital with you and take the word away. And you will watch with wonder how you will mess up your own life. If I talk to many of us now, I say, what are you trusting God for? In what area are you trusting God for results? I will be surprised how many of us are expecting external things to happen so that it can be proof that the word of God is working. No. When it has to do with fruitfulness, the major work is within. How many ministers will stay and build capacity with the word? There are ministers who do not have a Bible, but they already have suits in advance. And... I believe in success we teach you all the dimensions of success but let me tell you just putting pictures and photos of nice things on your wall and mesmerizing without the word of God is Scientology you are just joking and nothing will happen it is the word of God that empowers as many as believe him he gave them power to become Jesus said follow me follow the word and I will make you make you the maker is the word because it is vain to wake up early in the morning and to sleep late in the night only to eat the bread of sorrow that's why business people who reject god are in trouble ministry people who reject god are in trouble career people who reject god are in trouble it's amazing how many people leave church to go and honor an appointment because they've indoctrinated themselves to believe that god is a luggage vain is the strength of a man in this world that we live in it is the richness of the word of god the richness of your spiritual understanding that translates into your fruitfulness listen invest in understanding invest in understanding before you invest in clothes invest in understanding before you invest in hair invest in understanding before you invest in cars and houses and all of this to invest in understanding is not to buy books to invest in understanding is not to watch sermons to invest in understanding is to have the preparedness to pursue exact knowledge to buy a book is one thing to read it is another thing to understand it is another thing to apply it is another thing the labor dimension of fruitfulness is done internally please listen to me the dynamics of redemption happen in the grave after the third day when everything had finished the grave hades the place of the dead Jesus is done and he's ready to resurrect. Now he comes out in glory and we see the effulgence of his glory and he calls many sons into glory. Listen, if a major part of your life is visible for all to see, you are not successful. If a major part of your life is visible for all to see, in this kingdom, people are only allowed to see a minute part in fact it's even the manifestation most of the work is done within notice that your nourishment physically only a little part of it is seen they see the food and they see it entering your mouth every other thing the digestion etc etc be fruitful as as god has helped me to rise and grow i found myself I'm, I'm becoming more and more emotional to my own surprise because i look at people and i can understand the heart and the burden of jesus that he says he looks at people as though a sheep without a shepherd and i look i say oh i now see why africa is this way i now see why our lives are this way and do you know many of us believe that because we have sincerity life must answer to us sincerity is very important like we learned but it is not enough something about your understanding has empowered satan to destroy fruitfulness in your life something about your understanding please listen 
understanding is important when they employ you Sam come it's looking sharp and smart look at this when when you employ Sam you are not employing your body there are few employments where they border on size are we together now any size in many jobs can do what they are employing they are employing your understanding and the time with that understanding a job is time plus understanding in someone's assignment are you seeing that now yes so the factor is your understanding i've given this analogy come come stand here for me please look at this reason with me for one moment let's assume that this brother god forbid eh? i always give this example let's call this guy an arm robber that is a thief are we together and let's call this one a pastor a man of god looking sharp and then you are angry at this guy and you are praying that police will apprehend him because he's a nuisance to society and you are praying that god will open doors for this man to go to the nations because you consider him to be a blessing now shoot both of them now it's, it's not good to talk about shooting and a pastor but just in my example shoot both of them and let them fall to the ground dead who really died the dead body is on the ground now are you going to call the dead body a pastor is the dead body a pastor no is the arm robber is the dead body an arm robber neither the dead body nor the past the pastor's body nor the arm robber's body are the arm robbers or the pastor the pastor has gone the arm robber too has gone their bodies are there so who is really the pastor talk to me who is really the pastor this body if Sam adds weight, will it scatter the anointing on his head? Will it make him to suddenly become mad because he's not reasoning well? Not necessary. In fact, not at all. Are we together now? If this arm robber suddenly adds weight, does it necessarily stop him from having the appetite to steal? This is the arm robber and this is the pastor. When Satan comes, he doesn't need the body. He goes to the mind when the mind sits on the throne then the body becomes a slave to the mind the body becomes a helpless executor of the conclusions that have happened the board meeting happens between the mind and the spirit the body is not invited the body only executes the decisions that have been agreed upon same thing with the pastor when the holy ghost comes to you like he's coming to some of you now he's not concerned about the body he's concerned about your spirit then he's concerned about your mindset hand over to him your spirit and your mind so that he will plant in you the seed of understanding and watch how your body begins to reflect what has happened within you this my brothers and my sisters is how we are fruitful in this kingdom every other thing like creativity and all of these things only answer to this foundation say be fruitful be fruitful does not mean go and do business that comes later be fruitful does not mean go and look for capital be fruitful does not mean go and do all no no the heart preparation and your mind most believers have done well in the area of the heart the spirit but our minds are terribly unfruitful our minds continue to reject the spoken word of god concerning our lives and this is my assignment that if this year if we are to experience extraordinary fruitfulness then we have to trust god to begin to transit us listen carefully to transit us from different levels of understanding there is a requisite level of understanding that can receive what god wants to give you a man who is pastoring 5,000 members and a man who is pastoring 1,000 and a man who is pastoring 100 and a man who is pastoring 10. The difference is not their size. The difference is not their tribe. The difference is not even the God they gave their lives to. The difference can, may not even be the spiritual authorities they submit to. The difference is the construction of their understanding that someone has allowed the holy spirit to construct his value system 
to be so flawless that he knows how to engage the principles of the kingdom and the physical results show while he's activating these things every member that comes to him is in his house but something from within you calls them and it's not just anointing the health of your mind is a force too it can call the same way it can drive please listen to me my brothers and my sisters if you intend to be fruitful except it's just a cliche you know and, and and many times in africa i think this is the reason why we like signs and wonders not because they are such a big deal alone we like it because we believe it is a cheaper route to results just prophesy apostle why waste your time teach this didn't god anoint you for me I mean, just get bottles of oil here, touch my head, and just like that other person testified, that you bear fruits that abide. Well, while I was sitting down here, we just had a brief, maybe 10 seconds discussion with Ejimi, and he said, he shared a scripture that just blessed me. And he said, the Bible says, strong men retain wealth. Powerful. You are not strong just because you have it. The ability to retain it means you have conquered the forces that try to take it from you are we together when you lift um, this weight you don't just pick it up and drop it down and win you must hold it for some time it's proof that it's, it did just happen you hold it there while you are shaking and then at a point they say you have the point has been proven that this one you qualify to lift that weight so there are things that when you hold if you are not spiritual and you did not hold it indeed it will slip away but holding it for a while qualifies that you held it through knowledge we don't hold things with our hands our hands only support what our mind has held the real instrument for holding things is your mind when it's too heavy for your mind your hand can support but you don't hold things with your hand Is God speaking to us? You are seated here right now looking at me, swimming through a maze of challenges maybe, and believing that you came for koinonia so that you will experience transformation. Could be in ministry, could be in business, could be in whatever it is. But then the Lord is saying, I am limited by your understanding. There is something about your understanding that is not allowing me bless you. And let me tell you this. You see why Jesus wept. Any man of God who is committed to transformation knows how frustrating it is. It is difficult to get members to receive. That's why we take out time and pray. Not necessarily because what we are saying Saying it's not necessarily the prayer that brings it. Are we together? When revelation comes, the truth is there. But praying that when the seed is planted, that the minds of the people can receive. Let me tell you, less than 10% of members really follow and grow on the information they are given. That's why testimonies are scarce. That's why there are supernatural instant testimonies, but not sustainable ones. You will hardly see a member testify back to back for two months. He usually will come once and you don't expect to find him again. Because most of the testimony was not gotten through knowledge. Prophetic intervention. One miracle here. I fell under the anointing and the next day this happened. So I get a job by a prophetic word, but I never get promoted. You see that because the understanding that will make me that 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 trustable is not there i had the privilege to have a conversation with a very very notable uh, man you know one of the you know the second in command in one of the great institutions in this nation and then while he was talking to me and we were discussing he told me he said my apostle let me tell you it is not true that there are no jobs it's just that the level of mental depravity of the average young man with risk and this is a born again believer he said we are frustrated every time we take people to come for interviews as they talk we just continue to look at them and the privilege of marking school of ministry scripts has taught me that it is true you know we insult lecturers we insult everybody they gave me they gave me i have done at least you know i love god and i love you i have marked things that have said my god how in the world does this person plan to that's why 
teachings like it doesn't matter what happens in your mind just receive the anointing and rise we like it because we know that what is in there if god is going to remove it it will take time but I tell you, don't fight with the spirit. Sit down and let him take that thing. Let him edit your understanding and plant the word of God. And my brother and my sister, you will watch your life rise to reflect what God is putting within you. This is another place where the error of speaking without transformation comes. Just to call it, no sir, to where? It's like opening a tap and there is no container to receive it. The prophet was only comfortable to prophesy when there were vessels because the oil would be wasted without vessel. To just believe that you just keep calling things at random to your life with an empty mind is a joke. This is Scientology. And you have to be careful with all these materials we read around about the universe and all of this. Let me tell you, by the grace of God, God has granted us the privilege of light in this ministry. From any dimension you look at it. We're vast people who are keen on knowledge. So we don't speak from a standpoint of ignorance. Whether from business, from ministry, from whatever. We are, we are by the grace of God enlightened enough to provide the guidance that gives you balance. I can tell you many people will continue to be frustrated because they lack the understanding on how the kingdom of God and his systems accurately work. Are we together? Be fruitful is not just a prophetic declaration alone that happens automatically. Be fruitful leads you through a process. And the first of the processes is to allow the word of God to find expression in your spirit. Then to find expression in your mind. The moment your mind begins to transit, start rejoicing. With no idea, yes sir, start rejoicing. Because inevitably, the physical equivalent of everything that is already happening will begin to come to you in, in, in circles of what you will think are coincidences, but they are orchestrations based on a spiritual law. I was sharing with the leaders and I said, every time the student is ready, the lecturer always shows up. Every time the student is ready, the lecturer always shows up. Be fruitful. He's not just speaking to your body. Be fruitful. Be fruitful. Be fruitful. This is what will put money in your pocket. Be fruitful. It is not the capital that is given to your hands that makes you fruitful. It is not the business, the investment, or the job. The job is only a physical platform to give your understanding expression to reward you. Nobody prospers from business. Nobody prospers from investment. Nobody prospers from jobs. You prosper off your understanding. All of these things are simply platforms that give your understanding room. That's why two people can have the same platforms but different understandings. And all those vehicles will produce at different rates. Even in the good soil, it produces 30 fold, 60 fold. Hundredfold, the same way we have several people here in Koinonia. Many of you are members, workers, and leaders, but your results are produced at different rates. Same anointing, same mentorship, same programs, same teaching, different results, all producing. Are we together? If you want to be fruitful, your assignment is not to just start buying good clothes thank god for that i say this because you see young people have a pressure that society is pushing on people now they look at you and say since when did you graduate you say five years say, you are still dressing like this and the next thing god blesses you with thirty thousand. off you go to somewhere in anger i must buy stretch jeans thirty thousand. i must buy this and that and you shop it you you you, you, you shop physical things and then you put yourself under pressure and then you come back and say, look, this is to announce to you I have now improved. We say, why? You say, because I have a bigger house, because I have a bigger car, because I have a bigger this, I have that. To me, that, that is increase. No, sir. And your mind keeps saying you are wasting your time. You only bought something for someone else. 
I look at your mind and the only thing you have bought is a book because that's the only thing that has stayed in your mind. That's why nobody can steal the book because your mind caught it. Every other thing can carry the way because it only came around your life but not in your mind. The wealth must be gotten here before it comes here. Are we together? Yes. Apostle, now if somebody gives me money to start a business, can't I just start and prosper? You will fail. It's not an insult. You will fail. 99% of the people who want to start business will fail. Not because there are statistics of failure. Your mind, you do not have the understanding of the system to prosper. Anybody who wants to prosper, your first assignment is to look for references and models. Transformation is easy when there are references. Not activity, not action. No. Listen, when there is no reference, your, your mind operates with imagery. And the moment there is no reference for the possibility that you want to step into, you are not going there. Who is God speaking to? That this thing you are doing, you are just dreaming until there is a reference that's why by the grace of god we continue to walk with the holy spirit that he continues to lift us to make us better references listen let me tell you this if you sit under an apostolic ministry walking in signs and wonders you will enter into that grace fast because there is a reference your spirit can easily pick are we together if your pastor is a poor man by the grace of God, you will grow in the word. But it's going to be difficult because there is no reference. There is an impartation that results on themselves bring to you. Are you getting what I'm saying now? It's very important. That's why it's important. Every ministry and every organization rises to reflect the mindset of the leaders. It is true. Koinonia is a reflection of our mindset and also a reflection of our limitation. If you look at Koinonia and you see anything wrong, it is a reflection of the areas where personally my understanding and our understanding has not been well constructed. Our assignment is to bridge that gap as fast as possible through knowledge so that you will build what is akin to an edifice, a proof of mastery. As you grow, notice you grow in the secret, but you see your result on the members. You stay in the secret and God brings a new level of the anointing and you start watching in the physical to see. They were not there when God was giving you those new dimensions, but then you begin to get it. A time will come in this ministry, you will start seeing people have cars in strange ways. A time will come, you will see people start having certain results will rise. It is not just their personal faith, it's that there has been an upgrade in the secret place that can now receive that level of reality. A time is going to come when we will get our own property and sometimes it can be within two, three months and everything is put in place. You will think it just came. No, the lifting in the spirit. God now says, now you have the capacity there are things if God gave me today, I prayed for it for years. But I look at it today and I thank God for not answering those prayers. Because had he given me, it is true that you would have been a waste. The same way you have been praying. Notice that certain things seem to never get answered in your miracle service request. And it is not always that demons are stopping it. It is God's mercy that is keeping it from you. Because it will be a waste. And if you lose it, it will take a long time before it comes. So God will keep it for you. And let you just wallow in your interpretation, calling it delay. Whereas God is keeping it like a faithful caretaker until your understanding is able to sustain it. Are we together? Yes. This book of the law shall not depart from out of your mouth, but thou shalt meditate, 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 meditate. Value for the word of God. Listen, let me tell you, I, I look at people in this ministry and I am blessed the way God is lifting people in this ministry. Sometimes I, I, I know how I met them and I know how they came and see the power of the word of God 
transiting people. The word of God is not a charm. The word of God is a compendium of the principles of God. The understanding of the systems of God and obtaining grace to engage them is what changes your life. Listen, a day will come you will sit down and say, God, stop giving me money. As far as my personal needs are concerned, I don't know what to do. And God says, it's an irreversible process. It will keep coming. So God will say, divert anyone to the kingdom. But to stop it, it can't happen again. Wait till I teach you on wealth this year. God taught me something new. Ah! You see how you clapped? It's a reflection of the passion and the prayer. Oh God. Well, and it's not an insult. It's a wonderful thing. But let me tell you my brothers and my sisters. If this mind does not change, your life will not change. A man is in bondage when his mind is in bondage. No matter how free he is, he is bound. Watch my knee was bound and kept in prison many things happened to him but when they bound him he spoke loudest because his mind was still alive hallelujah glory to the lamb glory to the father you are seated on the throne hallelujah you sit down sit down we're going to pray we spend time worrying about people who don't like us do you know if they are not in your mind they can't do you anything wickedness only hurts you to the degree to which you allow it to step in it's true that you immune your mind that you come from a family where people say you too you want to rise you are also joining them you are coming to that that stupid place where there are you people are just jumping for nothing and you feel stupid and sometimes in that stupidity you open the gate of your mind and allow them to enter when they enter your mind you are gone set a guard over my mind it was a prayer set a guard Lord, that no matter what happens around my life, shield my mind and my life is safe. If you injure yourself, it can heal. Are we together? But the Bible says a broken spirit dryeth the bones. The bones can be healthy and the spirit broken and the bones begin to reflect what is happening. You don't off this light by breaking every bulb one by one. The light is reflecting the health of a generator and the health of a switch. Just because one switch is faulty, every healthy bulb will remain off at the mercy of one switch. The focus, my brother and my sister, is not in doing physical things. This anointing and this lifting you see, is not by physical connection. I'm a good musician. Invite me. I promise you that in the name of Jesus, I will rise. No. Let me tell you how to be invited. Stay in the secret place. Allow the spirit of God to brood. He will give you one song. He knows what men cannot resist. He will coordinate by all grace and anoint you. One song that you will raise. People, and he will make sure the ear of the person who can help you hears that song. And he says, who sang this song? Come to my church. He will array every other helper and he will anoint you so lavishly that day. You, you rise like a spring up and never go down again. The systems of lifting are very easy when your understanding is in place. It is difficult for God to lift a man whose understanding is unfruitful. You will frustrate the potentials of the spirit. Listen, brothers and sisters, this is a call to sit down. This running around and premature manifestation, comparing yourself with yourselves, the Bible says they are not wise. The key is to sit down. Someone will come dressing sharp like Sam is looking and try to intimidate you and say you have been in this area for years. The only thing I hear is ba 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 and your empty head, empty pocket, oh yeah, take and go and buy Indomie and you feel stupid as you go to the shop with 1,000 naira and say, God, is this how you plan to disgrace me? And God will say, if I give you money, have I not insulted you? Listen, 
listen brothers and sisters don't be so poor that all you have is money if all you have is an object you remove from your pocket or an object that is stored in a bank out of fear you are truly poor follow me when I finish those words I told you be fruitful we are just starting then there is multiply then there is replenish then there is subdue they are not the same never be poor such that all you have is just money if all you have is money you are extremely poor because there are many things money cannot do most poor people agree with what I'm saying because they have been angry about money since not because they understand it you say this in an average church and people say yes it's true it's just an opportunity to be angry at something they've tried to get but it is true God is giving you what is better than money you know this issue of saying this person is worth this worth that oh pastor alpha you are worth 10 million what, what nonsense what do you mean i'm worth 10 million no what do you mean you are worth 100 million 1 billion those are just carnal expressions sensual manifestations and it's not just say, oh i'm worth the blood of jesus is true too but you can be worth something solid that is greater than money hmm. hallelujah Glory to the Lamb, glory to the Father, you are seated on. Listen, I have taught you that there are things when you have in life, only the poor need you. There are things when you have in life, only the rich need you. There are things when you have in life, only the educated need you. There are things when you have in life only the uneducated need you. There are things when you have in life only children need you. There are things when you have in life only young people need you. There are things in life when you have only old people need you. But my brothers, there are things when you possess in this life. When you possess it. The, listen, listen, listen. You walk life at your terms. The great see you and call you great. This is what God is giving you. Please sit down. We are going to pray. Listen, look at me. Make no mistakes to think all this labor is simply to get money to your pocket. If that's all I'm doing with this teaching, I've insulted you. I deserve to be arrested for insulting you that bad. If all that we are doing in Koinonia is just to get you to a point where you can have a car or a house, it's an insult. You don't need to hear what I'm saying to buy a car or a house. What I'm giving you will make kings stand before you and look at you. Listen, they will come with their pride and hang it like Sheba in front of your door and stand and say, teach us wisdom. Are you getting me? I pray in the name of Jesus that you understand that there is a more superior way of living. I can meet Sam and Sam can bring out some money to sow into my life as a man of God and I collect what Sam has brought and I believe I'm valuable because he gave me some money I look at the money and smile and then I run away no listen when you get what I am teaching you and putting in your mind you will find out that the equation that the world uses a young man you save for 10 years and get a house. That equation is for some people. I'm exempting you from that list. Are you getting what I'm saying? Listen to me. Oh, borrow money from the bank and build a house, then repay over 30 years. No. There is a dimension that when you have, my brothers and my sisters, an estate developer will come to you and look at you and say, can I give you the privilege? I've taught you something. Look at this isn't it amazing that the greediest people in the world are still givers it's just that you are not the one they give to let me tell you this there is nobody that is really greedy they just believe you are not deserving of that level of communication some of our parents we will call them 
and say daddy support me and they will refuse yet a man of god will come to the city and they will carry 10 times the amount you have been begging and kneel down and say sir can you give us the privilege to sow they are not greedy they just believe it's unfair to give you that much listen your pride should not be a car your pride should not be good clothes what you are receiving you have left the level of car and clothes since what you are waiting for now is the systems that bring them i want you to believe in what i'm telling you if you think right now what you are getting is what will give you a car what will give you a car finished since 2013 14 you are receiving what will subdue nations not a car what is a car what is a bank account how many what is a visa to go to abroad london is it jupiter listen be careful the things that represent your expectations don't shortchange yourself god is giving you the keys of the hearts of kings of nations not not some little one one jeep here one this and you say now i have a jeep my mind ah oh, no please a time will come we'll just sit down and testify and we'll be grateful god just did this and that and that to be an insult that what you are learning now is just for an estate no an estate a car my brothers and my sisters be patient with god and be patient with me and watch what your life becomes it's a guarantee that i give you by god we're not talking of buying a car we're not talking of buying clothes we're talking of shutting the gates of nations I had the privilege to meet with a very great woman of God who is also a business person and while we were talking she was telling me her itinerary and she said she's on her way to France right now that the president of France they need to have meetings I said this is it whereas some mediocre somewhere is there harassing people just because he bought an expensive shoe there are people deciding the destinies of nations a president of a nation like France calling for you to sit down this is what God is training you to become the level of anointing you are receiving is not to compare yourself with somebody in your family to say I am first that's mediocrity that is for somebody who is just passing koinonia to go to his house that's what that person receives as the gift for just passing to go I testify, testify that your goodness is real. I testify that your goodness is real. Your goodness is real. I testify. Your goodness is real. I testify. Listen, the work you are doing in your destiny is what you are doing now. A time will come when from morning till night, all that you will see is testimonies of men coming to serve your needs. It will surprise you and because you will not be a man of God as it were. You know, most times we've thought that these things only happen to men of God. It's not true. These are the systems of the kingdom. You've heard me say that we will all be great and that we will all know ourselves. Keep watching. Keep watching what our children will be. Keep watching. Most times people don't believe truth until it's too late. There are people today who look and say, I used to know this man. It's not used to know. God is giving you an opportunity to catch a flight that only the hand of God can limit where it is going. It is by the Spirit. Listen. This tonight is a message of hope so that this pressure to prove a point, throw it out of the window. You have left that realm since. Hear what I'm telling you, you have left that realm since. Pressure to prove a point. Oh, apostle, I'm, my desire now is to trust God. Let me just get a four bedroom flat. And God says, but you got a four bedroom flat right when Koinonia started. It is just coming through the loins of time to manifest. Who through faith subdued kingdoms 
there are some of you let me tell you when you you see this is why when you see the physical manifestation of certain people's results the level of their transformation does not allow them to start physically at certain levels you see god jump to a height is because of the vastness of their level of understanding there are some of you here you will be surprised that your first car will be a jeep and people will be angry not because a jeep is anything god says if if i will have to be this is the fairest i can be to you based on how you have transited and then you will be surprised to find out that while you were thinking god would just give you a two-bedroom flat and this and that god will bring you to a five-bedroom flat and god will say this is just to give you the convenience to start out in life and people will be surprised because it's not in your heart it's amazing how believers mark time under certain achievements it tells you that they didn't plan to go far one man of god sent me a text sometime and he said somebody sent him five thousand dollars he said apostle i can't believe i'm holding dollars five thousand dollars and he was shouting was saying, oh god thank you and i sent him a text after a long time i said mister be careful that can be the very reason why you go down if your whole life is worth five thousand dollars you are very small You get what I'm saying? That one person here, one person will be able to have the resources that can completely clear an IDP camp, one person, without making noise. This is what God is raising you to become. And you will not even consider yourself to be a kingdom financier doing that. You are just somebody who loves God. Hi. Be patient. Be patient. I cause the spirit of hurry. Be patient. Be patient. Watch what our children in Koinonia become. When they are five, ten, you will look at their lives and you will see how wealthy they will become independent of your contribution by engaging the world themselves. There are some of you seated here right now and all you are dreaming of is starting your church and the anointing on you with all humility even many overseers do not have it and God says sit down there just sit down because I'm not giving you a church I'm giving you territories territories not just a small church to flatter yourself and compare yourself between a group of pastors and say I am better no sir no sir I testify testify that your goodness is real I testify testify that your goodness is real hey, your goodness is real I testify Let me speak to someone here. The prayer request that you think God did not answer, He's answered it since. It's just that you didn't know how the answer comes. He answered it since. Some of you, God looked at your prayer request and all He saw was a blank sheet because everything you wrote, you are bigger than it already. And God did not see a need. God is saying, you've not given me a prayer request. You wrote nonsense there. Lord, if I can just have 30,000 every month, and Lord, if I can, and God just looks at it and says, the level of the word that is in you can only allow for minimum a hundredfold return. I say, God, but I'm a village boy, I'm a village girl, and God says, leave all of that one and stay with me. Listen, beware of the pride of unbelievers. Respect unbelievers who have gotten knowledge. But there are many unbelievers who are ignorant and you see them 
doing, making all kinds of noise. They will rubbish you and make you look small. I sense that there is a spirit that is just going around great believers to make them feel small, to make them look like we have waited so long. Is it that God cannot give you a shoe? What is in a shoe that God cannot give you? What is in a cloth? You mean you are still using a, a second hand with one? Ah, but you should have left this level and you go back feeling stupid. And God says, my daughter, forget about this. Are you ready to pray? be fruitful he's giving you the keys of nations the keys the keys the keys not the key of a territory the keys of nations listen today by the grace of god koinonia has become like a place of pilgrimage you cannot believe the number of people who want to come here for visit i've had to restrain many of them pleading with them because I think that we may not have the facilities to truly honor them as we should. It is not location. It is not where you go. When you stay with God and the light shines from you, my brothers and my sisters, you will become a praise of nations that people will look at you and our family will say, we've been praying for rising. We didn't know God answered it in a person. We thought God would shift us to another territory. Lift your voice and begin to pray in the spirit and say, Lord, thank you. Though my beginning may be small, though my beginning may be small, but my latter end, though my beginning may be small, if someone pray, I am fruitful. I may not yet manifest fruitfulness in my pocket. I may not yet manifest fruitfulness in a job. I may not yet manifest fruitfulness in my business, but in the name of Jesus, I declare that I am fruitful. Gentiles to my light. Gentiles to my light. Are you praying, Koinonia? Be fruitful. Be productive. God is altering your thoughts, altering your understanding. We win by the help of our spirit man and the health of our understanding God is showing you the laws of the spirit showing you success systems take your eyes away from the physical results I assure you nothing will stop them from coming men may mock you they may laugh at you. Where is the increase in ministry if you are really anointed? Where are the invitations to travel around? If you are really anointed, who is placing a demand on your grace? They will say, but forget about them and stay with the God of all flesh. Let him walk upon your spirit. Let him walk upon your mind. Allow that pregnancy that is in your mind. Allow it to reach maturation and watch the wonder that you will produce. Your goodness is real. Testify. Your goodness is real. Your goodness is real. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We are going to challenge the spirit of impatience. Listen. God is a God of speed. But God only gives you your inheritance when you are built up. Everybody say built up. Be careful with unhealthy comparison. Business people listen. Career people listen. We were all classmates. Now this one is like this. This one has two houses. And I am here. Nothing is moving. Be careful. If you see that in your life, know it's an attack. Listen, listen. Especially for our dear sisters. Listen to me, my adorable ladies. Let me tell you this. You listen to what this arrogant world without Christ is telling you. You will not amount to anything. They will make you feel stupid for loving God. 
they will make you feel stupid for staying and growing you will look so cheap and weak but you stay and let God adorn you like Hadassah and lift you like a trophy in one day one day what is a prayer point of nations come to you because you are prepared don't be ashamed of where you are you are still fruitful don't be under pressure listen listen let me tell you this if you can conquer the pressure of proving a point you have conquered life the pressure of proving a point I need to prove to the people in my family. I need to prove to the people in my village. They've been saying, what are you doing in Zaria for five years? Eh? Are you cursed that your life is not rising? Hold on. When God is done with you. Ah. My deliverer is coming. My deliverer is standing by. My deliverer is coming. Let me tell you a humorous story and then we'll pray some time back i was to inv be invited somewhere one of the places that i went to minister and a man of god was called and asked and said do you know apostle joshua selman and he said well i've heard about him but i don't know him and the man at the other side of the phone advised the the people to invite me and said Can't, we don't know this man don't invite him rather invite a b c d and the person at the phone say you don't know the encounters i've had with this man it's impossible for us no matter what you say we must invite him that's what happens when you wait for god there are men that continue to pray secretly why don't you fall so that it will justify their prophecy but my brothers and my sisters when god puts something in your spirit and put something in your mind you have watched people waste their time forever they will waste their time forever it is the finger of god that lifts you and keeps you they will finish a meeting and say don't promote pastor alpha sit down here he will never rise just when they finish the man goes back and by the next day the promotion letter is out listen there are not too many people like us on earth it's important for you to understand this it's not pride it's a breed that is plucked out of fire your deliverer is coming. Your deliverer is standing by. Your deliverer is coming. Your deliverer is standing by. and admire today will be the things that will follow you tomorrow you would drive them and they say we can't go you called us you called us but he seek ye first the kingdom of God and his methodology his systems and all other things is a guarantee except this word your certificate can only take you so far your intellect can only take you so far but my brothers and sisters i commend you to god he says i commend you not just to your certificate not just to the advantage of your tribe not just to your family connection i commend you first to god and then to the word of his grace and he leaves you with an assurance that it is capable of building you up and giving you an inheritance a time will come those who mock you will give up they will say that you have risen to a height and a level where it will be stupid to talk about you the lifter of men lifting you I like you to decree and declare no power is stopping me from being fruitful fruitful in my spirit fruitful in my mind koinonia you pray shamakato shatia embrekato sakatoras kima hashalakatos 
the anointing is growing in my spirit i'm full of the power of god full of the holy ghost some may trust in shadows and others horses but i trust in the name of the lord i may not have relatives to back me i may not have a wealthy family to support me but i have received god and the word of his grace that is able 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 to lift me outside i will pray why we look not at the things that are seen but the things that are unseen for the things that are seen are temporal 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 hallelujah be fruitful carry that mentality every time the word of god says be fruitful the devil takes you to your atm and says how much is there every time the word says be fruitful he says so why are you thinking of paying rent you are even trusting god to raise the money for the rent does that look like fruitfulness let me tell you the devil is a liar he's a master of the sense realm and if you dwell there he will say where are the members you have 10 members and you have the effrontery to say you are fruitful are you ready to prophesy to yourself spirit soul and body i am fruitful decree and declare i will make you exceeding fruitful nations will come out of you and kings out of your loins businessman prophesy yes sir with no evidence i am fruitful i am fruitful blessed is the man that shared the lord that delighted greatly in his commands his seed shall be mighty upon earth the generation of the upright shall be blessed wealth and riches shall be in his house and his righteousness endures forever man of god are you praying i'm fruitful the anointing is at work in my life nobody can reject the investment of the holy ghost upon my life it may take time but i'm rising in the name of jesus christ my family members may not yet see the hand of God upon my life everybody around me may doubt the finger of God I may even doubt it myself but I hear to the command I am fruitful I am fruitful in spite of your failures I am fruitful declare fruitful hallelujah That's my mindset. Fruitful, fruitful, fruitful. Take your eyes away. I am fruitful. The landlord harasses you is true. I'm fruitful, still fruitful. You may not have money to prepare a meal, but in the name of Jesus, God is doing something. The wealth is not transferred to your account. The wealth is transferred to the soil of your mind. Ah, oh God. He's an awesome God, He reigns from heaven above with wisdom power. chapter 2 and verse 5 don't forget philippians let this mind let this mindset let this body of understanding be in you listen hold on every great man you know is who he is not because of the wealth and the affluence the wealth and the influence is a receipt for something you have paid for when you see money in your pocket that money is a receipt you get receipts only when you have bought things the good shoe is a receipt. The good cloth is a receipt. The first class flight is a receipt. It is not the reason why you are blessed. It is the proof that you are already blessed. 
Are you getting me now? How many of you know that sometimes when you go to a mall after you shop, you have to patiently wait on the queue for the next cashier to attend to you? That's what is happening to many of us. You have already bought the things. You are at the point of completing that transaction and then life will hand you the receipt. It will come as a car. It will come as open doors. It will come as you never having to follow the bus for anything again. It will come as you having the convenience to do certain things for the kingdom. But until then, be patient. For some of you, you are, you, have, you are standing on that queue, just waiting for your turn to come. And my brothers and my sisters, you will come up with a level of results that will surprise you. Can I tell you this? Don't be afraid of results that came through understanding. Don't be afraid of results that came through understanding. Most times you see, because of the multiple failures, like the man who planted, when you plant by the wayside, when you plant by the rock, when you plant upon thorns, that experience alone may make you think even the good soil will fail. But you see, when that seed begins to grow, and becomes a great tree it will not only bless you it will bless the birds it will bless everybody who is passing around that's what God is doing with us are you getting what I'm saying very very important you are receiving something you are receiving the anointing but you are receiving an understanding so don't let the devil come and begin to talk jargons you will fail in your life you will fail in your business you will fail in marriage you will fail in um, um financially you will fail spiritually that organization you cannot be able to run an organization you, you cannot be able to run a ministry who told you that do you not know that it is wisdom and knowledge that creates stability they are the stabilizers of destiny and that's what god is doing so we are going to pray lord reconstruct my understanding to be able to receive the things that will make me fruitful lift your mind your, your voice and pray reconstruct my understanding reconstruct my understanding lord there are things in my mind that may not allow me to be fruitful i acknowledge them are you praying i acknowledge that there are limitations territorial limitations tribal limitations sociological limitations i've interacted with a kind of people who have kept me bankrupt mentally they may be my family members they may be my relatives they may be my classmates they may be well-meaning people if someone pray lord i give you the allowance to alter my understanding there is something i know or do not know about ministry that is allowing me to be unfruitful there is something i know or i do not know about finances that makes me to keep going up and down there is something i know or do not know about the anointing that doesn't allow me to host very superior levels of grace quicken my understanding quicken my understanding quicken my understanding hallelujah I apologize for taking time the Holy Spirit is giving me a scripture Isaiah 11 and verse 2 we're still praying. Isaiah 11 and verse 2 can you still have it projected Isaiah 11 and verse 2 let's see if we can find it let me turn it here to save time Isaiah chapter 11 and verse 2 hmm. I'm handing over to you a secret is a secret that make men really great and the spirit of the Lord shall rest upon him the sevenfold manifestation of the spirit of God and the spirit of wisdom and understanding the spirit of counsel and might the spirit of knowledge and of the fear of the Lord verse 3 it says and shall make him of quick understanding quick all of these spirits synergize themselves to make sure your understanding is quick this is what you have to pray a quickened understanding is a real miracle you can have as a student a five point cgpa yet your understanding is unfruitful the fortitude to understand life to know wisdom is understanding you become a priority personality by default your understanding upgrades you like you are upgraded from economy to a business class to first class your understanding upgrades you to a level in life where you never have to come down again you are not trying to stay it has stabilized you at a realm are you ready to pray finally lord quicken my understanding 
I confess that there are gaps in my knowledge. I confess that there are gaps. I, I am learning already, but my foundation is fighting my mindset. I am, I am still loyal to old ideas. I am still loyal to old concepts. Lord is taking me a hard time to acclimatize myself to a new system of lifting. I cry for mercy and I cry for grace. Is someone praying? I am still sympathetic to a, a depraved level of thinking that will not allow you do business with me. Hallelujah. A prophetic word is only useful when there is a vessel. The vessel is your heart. The vessel is your mindset. When the Holy Spirit renews your mind, it's like, it's like a welder creating a container. And once everything has been welded well, then prophecy can deposit that spiritual investment upon you. And you will find out that you will retain. Strong men retain wealth. Not money, wealth. The wealth of the anointing retained by strength not the strength of the flesh be strengthened in your inner man inner man that's where true true strong people are even physically if you are stronger than me it doesn't guarantee that you can defeat me is that true because my mind can create a strategy that will defeat you that's how it is it is not always to the physically strong it is not always in physical agility but the health of your spirit mind and a well-developed understanding. You see, I teach you and continue to stand with the Holy Spirit to work on our minds because as your mind begins to seek transformation, it must be guided. Are we together? The mind is like a womb seeking for any kind of seed and there are other seeds. In other sessions, I will show you that there is the part two of that parable that Jesus gave. We'll go to the part two while men slept. That's the part two of that story. Another sower also came and sowed a seed and left. So there are many sowers. And there are times you can open up your heart because you want to succeed. You open up your heart to zodiac and Scientology and all kinds of things to try to manipulate the cosmic world to release energy and once have I spoken and twice have we heard that all power belongs to God there are certain liftings if it happens it is only God that can do it are we together I declare over your life in the name of Jesus be fruitful in the name of Jesus be fruitful in your spiritual life be fruitful in ministry be fruitful in business be fruitful in the name of Jesus Christ, I decree and declare, for many of you, it will do you like a dream. For many of you, this is the week that your manifestation begins. In the name of Jesus, and I speak over you that my God is able to make all grace abound towards you. So that ye having all sufficiency, that you will abound in every good thing. I decree and declare, be fruitful. Be fruitful in your spirit mind. Be fruitful in your mind. May the spirit of grace coordinate you to the exact information required for your lifting. And I pray for courage. There are people you have to say no to and have the grace to say, look, I love you, but I have a track record of you being the reason why my mind will not receive the things of God. You don't have to hate people, but it's time to construct your environment creatively to allow the Spirit of God bless you. You don't have a serious meeting outside on the road. You go to a boardroom. You need to make that atmosphere for the Spirit of Revelation to come. And sometimes you need to take away distractions, distractions, distractions. It can come in form of good friends. Who will never allow you sit down and think 
and this affects all ages and all ranges there are people who have made a commitment to go nowhere you don't have to hate them like abraham when you get to the base of the mountain plead with them to remain there if not they will not allow you offer isaac and be the father of nations are we together i decree and declare this weekend for many of you by the spirit of the living god return with strange testimonies there is an increased grace for performance in this house i decree again in the name of jesus return with strange testimony hallelujah give jesus praise all through this week the weekend into next week i'd like you to carry this mindset be fruitful be fruitful be fruitful the focus is not just on your hands the focus is on your mind engage what i've told you go and sit down go on youtube sit down don't search nonsense don't go on youtube and sit down searching movie and watching this i was teaching the leaders in my opinion i'm not on any social media platform but i think one of the most useful social media platforms in my opinion is youtube it's true there is almost nothing that is needed for your lifting even customized to edit nonsense that you will not find there you have the liberty to edit a lot of things and go for exact knowledge whether it is about the anointing whether it's about this you can see it and get it away if it's not useful for you but take away laziness please 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 the phone god gave you is for your mind are we together yes the song is ministering to your spirit the truths are ministering to your spirit and your mind sit down sit down wake up in the night be intentional carry a notebook carry videos carry this you may not have money to buy cds but god was able to ask somebody to send you two thousand it's not just miracle alert it's so that you can buy data and sit down what is the secret to this and this engage your mind engage your mind engage your mind don't be like the foolish virgins engage your mind carry extra oil it was time that showed who was wise and who was foolish all of them started as the same women all virgins time is what separated the wise from the foolish are we together please minimize roaming around the street if you cannot sit down in one place it's an attack on you it truly is an attack if you don't have anything doing outside for god's sake go back to your house go back to your house you must not just go around visiting everybody people are busy the time for visitation will come when you enter your sabbath but for now sit down i expect every young man to be up and doing you wake up tomorrow morning you don't just yawn and cross your legs you get up and sit down it's time to do something in the name of jesus what am i doing today i'm learning on the anointing you write you are studying scripture remember god is giving you an international ministry and you are not making noise you don't need to know how much the price of suit is settle down now your one two three hours daily prayer keep to it keep to it keep to it you wake up in the morning the cold is too much say i resist you in the name of jesus i must get up the foolish man because of the weather will not plant he will say it's too cold and he will not have anything to reap in harvest are we together now and please let's help ourselves you see me speaking to you passionately our time is gone if you see somebody who is not settling down seriously and not serious with his life if you have access and you are a stakeholder in his life you can call him and say look my brother i appreciate you a lot but you are gallivanting up and down it's time for you to sit down today you are in this person's house next tomorrow you are there next tomorrow you are in abuja next tomorrow you are in lagos next tomorrow you are in mina please sit down one thing is needful this is what mary has chosen sit down your phone should not be for watching movie your phone is not for watching indian film it's not for soap opera you will not die if you don't watch those things my brothers and my sisters sit down 
sit down sit down there is a price for greatness every time you want to slack just remember your children whether or not you have physical children remember your children remember your aged parents remember the generation it will jack you up sleeping 12 hours you are causing your destiny are we together you must trust god for grace i told you especially for the gentlemen minimize snoring your night time night times are times when revelations come from heaven looking for men who are alert to come into their lives go and sell two of your suits and buy data and sit down if you need to trust god to buy a good phone and it is for the purpose of this i'm praying for you may my god give you a good phone if the purpose of buying a phone is to prove to somebody that the word of God is working, may God make what I preach tonight, after all this time I've spent, to really re-echo in your head again. In the name of Jesus Christ. Father, thank you. We give you all the praise in the mighty name of Jesus. You are here and you are not born again. Jesus said, "Ye, please keep standing. I notice that every time I'm about to make the altar call, people start leaving. Please, that's not correct. Let's be patient. When the altar call is taken, let's respect them. There are people here, on hearing me speak, the Holy Spirit began to speak to you. He said, there is need for a renewal. There is need to begin a fresh walk. You are here, overflow one, two, three, and anywhere else online. I want to give you an opportunity to hand your life over to Jesus. And for many of us to dedicate your life to Jesus. There's nothing to be ashamed of. There's nothing to be afraid of. Two minutes for this. Our time is gone. Wherever you are, summon the courage. Make your way quickly and come to the front. I believe there has to be someone Jesus is talking to. Don't be afraid. Don't be ashamed. Don't wait for someone to come before you come. 